Hello, and welcome to our second edition of Win with Black Women. Today, we are excited because Black women have reached, have made another history mark. We are in the history books in another way. Today, we are excited to support a Black woman as the pre vice presidential candidate, Kamala Harris. And I'm proud to say as a note of personal privilege that she's a sorority sister and a fellow alumnus of Howard University. We have worked incredibly hard for this moment. And I tell you, we didn't do it alone. We had some people on the train with us. And one of those people is our board chair, Miss Melanie Campbell, chair of Sisters Lead, Sisters Vote, and another sister who was like the convener of a mighty and powerful network of women, Black Women United. And I wanna bring them both on to celebrate with me in this moment before you get started. I'm your host for the moment and moderator of this event, Holly Holiday from Sisters Lead, Sisters Vote. But now let's hear from our president, Melanie Campbell and Joteka Eddy. Ladies, we did it! Yes, hi Holly Holiday. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your leadership and it's, and it's just an awesome moment to be on here with my sister, Joteka Eddy. Uh, and we have to celebrate this moment um, and then get get to work, right? Um, I, I said in the moment that it took place, I, the first thing I thought about was my mom. The first thing yeah. I thought, the next thing I thought about was my grandma and all my yeah. aunts and so many others and sisters who've gone on. And then I just, and then I just cried. I just yeah. cried. Yeah. And I felt like I was seen fully for the very first time for the very first time. And then I put on that political hat. I said, okay, yes. we gotta get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, the black woman tsunami is on its way and the work starts immediately. And exactly. I think that uh, Joe, uh, uh, Joe Biden made an excellent choice in who he chose tonight. So this win with black women, we know that when this ticket wins, it's gonna go down balance. Absolutely. And it's gonna, and it's gonna change the idea that a, a diverse ticket is a is, is something uh, as an exception, right? Something yes. that it should be the rule in a nation mm -hmm. that is full of people of color. Absolutely. And it's our time. We're going to seize this moment. And tonight we celebrate, tomorrow we work. Tonight we celebrate, tomorrow we work. And Melanie, you always say that Black women are the secret sauce. And all I can say is the sauce is cooking and we're ready yes, to go. Here we go. Thank you so much. And, and, thank you. Uh, I'm tuning in. Absolutely. And thank you, Joteka, for all your hard work. And and take a, yes. Tell us what this has meant. All of our hard work. How are you feeling today? I'm back. Yes, you're back. <laughs> this is Melanie Campbell. Inspiration to celebrate this moment with you. Absolutely. Uh, do you have a minute to give us your first impressions before you know, we break? I you have so many emotions. I've cried. I have. Um, I've yelled. I've cried. I've had. Um, I've had awesome. so many moments. I, yeah. you know, really. Last night I sent out a tweet and I was just having a moment of reflection. I was thinking about. Sojourner Truth, I was thinking about Harriet Tubman, I was thinking about Fannie Lou Hamer and Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your leadership. Who would have known that a little idea would have meant so much? You know, so I, I I um my first reaction was just one of it it, it just was a just a moment of just a quiet moment. Um, it was, it, it's just, I'm elated. Senator Harris is an excellent, uh, an excellent choice. She will be an excellent vice president. Uh, the energy around the country right now is just amazing. There is so much energy as it relates to this election. Black women, young people all, all over the country are excited yeah, about this ticket, the Biden-Harris ticket. And I'm excited and ready to work to do everything I can ensure that 
Vice President Biden and Senator Harris uh, will become President Biden and Vice President Harris. Absolutely. Well, we're going to bring Tiffany on because we have a lineup of amazing women. And Tiffany, join us in this conversation. Who, who can we expect? Who is coming up? Let's go. Tiffany! got to be part of this conversation, ladies. She has yes. to be. She can miss it. She can miss it. I have to say, I am so excited, and I want to thank Jotaka for pulling together this amazing group. Holly, I want to thank you for all of your work. Um, Y'all have sent, I think, about 8,000 emails a day, Uh, but it was worth it in in the end. It's a historic moment, and I just, you know, when Black women organize, ain't nothing we can't do, and I hope that other people notice the energy and excitement around uh, this this movement that's happening. Yes. So it's an exciting time to be alive and I'm uh, very excited to be part of this conversation. All right, we're gonna let you get the conversation started and bring in your panelists. And yes. um, as we're bringing them in, feel free to introduce. I'm here today to just be a fan. I'm here to celebrate. So I'm gonna drop out and, and listen to the conversation uh, with rapt attention, because I can't wait for that to happen. Thank you so much for doing it. I hope this. somebody is bringing in the panel, because you know I have no idea. I don't know. We got you. We're bringing okay, in. Okay, all right. And so everybody at home, I hope y'all have cocktails yes. to celebrate the moment. The sad thing is there's no alcohol in here, ladies. There's no alcohol in here. But that's okay. I pretend that it is. Hello, panel. Thank you for joining me. Um, so when we, before we get started, I will ask, I'm going to go in order I see on the screen. I'm going to ask Jessica, Tiffany, Chandra, and Christina in that order to introduce yourselves and say what organization you're with. Okay. I guess I'm, I'm going first. Um, I'm Jessica Bright. I am a native here of South Carolina, of the rural part of South Carolina. Um, and I served, I recently served as this, I'm getting through that. I recently yeah. served as the um, state director for Bernie Sanders in um, South Carolina and Ohio. Excellent. Tiffany. Hello, everyone. I'm Tiffany James. I'm so excited to be here to celebrate with my my sisters. Um, I am from Columbia, South Carolina. I am um, the former um, South Carolina Black Engagement Director for Pete Buttigieg and um, former South Carolina De- um, Deputy Political Director for Pete Buttigieg. Um, currently, I am the president of the National Action Network of Columbia, South Carolina. So happy to be here with you all. And you have a beautiful name, if I may say so. Oh my God, my sister. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love your name as well. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Chandra. Hi, everybody. I cannot even um, express the excitement of being here with you guys today. Um, My name is Chandra Scott. I'm an attorney um, here in South Carolina from North Charleston. Um, I had the pleasure of serving as the um, deputy political director for Senator Kamala Harris here in South Carolina. And I'm currently working with the South Carolina Democratic Party as a voter protection director. So I am so extremely pleased to be here, to be able to celebrate this moment with um, so many of my wonderful friends and colleagues. Um, so I'm just happy to be here to, um, to be on this panel. Excellent. And Christina. Hey, Tiffany. Um, thank you so much for having us. My name is Christina Q, and I am Chief of Staff at Full Circle Strategies. I'm also from Monterey, from South Carolina, from Aiken, South Carolina. And I was formerly on the President of Warren's campaign here in South Carolina as well. Also, I know you are um, my favorite of um, Tiffany. So, um, so, yes, I am so happy to be here with my sister from all over the other countries. And we just wanted to come and have a little South Carolina moment for you guys. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, look, look, this is the thing that I love about this panel. One, you're all from the South. Uh, yeah. Women after my own heart. Two, you all have worked on different campaigns. And yeah. here we are standing united yeah. uh, as we go into the final stretch. And three, being daughters of South Carolina, you were a part of the mechanism that resurrected Joe Biden's campaign, even if you didn't do it directly. Um, when you look to your left and your right at the black folks in, in, in your state, um, these were the people who breathed life back into this campaign that put Joe Biden in the position to select 
uh, Senator Harris as his running mate. So I'm thrilled to be in y'all's company today. Um, South Carolina, quite frankly, is a very important state. You know, it's considered um, a, a necessary stop on the campaign trail. Uh, obviously, it's the home of uh, Congressman Leader, Leader uh, Clyburn. It's the home of Senator uh, Jamie Harrison. Hello, somebody. Nice. And, uh, it, it, it could be the state to send two black senators, all being on the opposite sides of the divide, um, to Congress. So yeah. it, it, it's, it's consequential, really. The one thing I, I'd like you all to speak to, some people in the media space that's largely run by older white men view South Carolina as um, a, 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 a record, if you will, on how all black voters feel. And I constantly have to correct people, well, wait a second, what voters in South Carolina value may be different, what voters in the Bronx value. What do you all say about that? Because people look, I mean, every primary season, people look to South Carolina to see, hmm, how do the blacks feel? And instead of how do black voters individually feel? How do you guys um, reconcile that as we celebrate this beautiful moment of our diverse community? Yeah. Well, well I, I, you go ahead, Tiffany. Oh, okay. I will say, you know, the black vote is not a monolith, right? We are, we are diverse um, in age, and our experience and our backgrounds. We come from different areas. There's a lot of army brats in South Carolina because of all the bases here. So people come from all over. Um, so I would say that. Um, I will also say that, you know, the black vote, um, you know, was carried by um, a lot of people who trust who trusted Joe Biden because he came back to South Carolina, even when he was not running. He came back and he gained the trust of a lot of black surrogates, a lot of our state senators and representatives and our councilmen and women and, and um, a lot of the pastors who remember Biden coming back, um, you know, to, to mourn with us during the Mother Emanuel, you know, right after his son died. Um, he, he ran for office several times and South Carolina didn't choose him then. They chose him now because they said he kept coming back even after he lost. So, yeah, yeah I, th I think to, um, to Tiffany's point too, I think um, it just also speaks to, if you're planning to run for president, um, it speaks to the importance of South Carolina and the importance of the, importance of the investment in South Carolina. A lot of times, especially being in leadership roles on the various campaigns that we were on, we had to fight for resources, fight for staff, fight for, you know, whatever we needed to say, hey, South Carolina is important. And, you know, in that primary season, a lot of focus and attention goes to Iowa, but, but the diversity in South Carolina is more than every state combined before you get to South Carolina, right? So like, you know, um, I think this moment, like really, like once Biden kind of catapulted out of South Carolina, it was like, we tried to tell you, like, you know, right. you know, Carolina can always change the game every single time, you know, that and, that, and most people that have gone through this process know that, but um, but I think I'll just underscore that point um, just to piggyback off of Tiffany. Can I, I want to jump in and, and ask Chandra a question because you, your work is not over, right? Your work is just beginning, quite honestly. And even though we're all in this celebratory moment, um, we have a long way to go on the campaign trail. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a small victory. We have won the battle, but there are many wars to come. How can we on this call support you in your work in South Carolina? And I just want to remind the people who are watching right now that although South Carolina is um, comprised of a huge amount of Black voters, that the state really is red. And a lot of people think the South is red in perpetuity. And I got to remind people, it's only red until it ain't. And given what we've seen from um, Jamie Harrison, I mean, the state, you know, the state's politics could be changing. So two questions. One, how can the women on the call support you? And two, how do you think the top of the ticket will impact the down ballot races in South Carolina, specifically Jamie Harrison? 
Okay, um, is, I'm hoping my mic is okay um, and you guys can hear me just fine. Okay, okay, awesome. Um, thank you so much, first of all, again, for um, being here. So I feel like everyone on the call can assist um, right now with making sure that we are protecting voters' rights. You know, there's a lot going on in regards to trying to suppress the vote, trying to um, do voter intimidation and things of that nature. And so we need all of the um, individuals to, that are lawyers, that are our, um, politicians that work in politics to be able to volunteer with our voter protection unit. Um, also, we have people that are doing um, our hotline. And so just making sure that we get that information out there, not only to volunteer, but also to energize our Black community so that they can um, be a part of the democratic process, but also to show them that um, we can also select down ballot. We have a lot of amazing candidates running um, and they all need our protection as well. And so so um, I think just for that, people can um, get in, volunteer, and make sure that we are continuing to fight because it's not over. And as we know, um, it's just beginning, especially as we rally around our new um, MVP and make sure that she is protected through this process. Um, thank you for that. And we'll be, look, election protection is a huge issue. And let me just remind the audience who's, who's joining us at home um, now that there is already um, foreign election interference. We know that Russia, U.S. intelligence agencies have confirmed that Russia is trying to uh, interfere with our elections. Joe Biden is now getting um, the intel briefing. He too has confirmed this. Russia, uh, so, uh, Iran is also trying to impact our elections, and I don't imagine China will sit this out. Um, so this is a big deal, and, and we should be cognizant of that for sure. But there is also the domestic voter suppression that happens that is often more than often GOP led and South Carolina has certainly seen its share of that. But really, uh, I don't know that there's any area that can be exempt from efforts to suppress our votes and oppress our lives. So I appreciate you raising that point. I also would like you, if you could, speak to the impact of having Senator Harris on the top of the ticket and how that might impact Jamie Harrison's chances to get to the Senate. Um, I feel that um, in South Carolina, especially being from here, like majority of the ladies are, we've seen politics done one type of way. We've seen the same people in office. We've seen these same people fundraise and they win just on based on name recognition, as well as the fact that we as a black community are just not in the know. And I feel that because of this previous, this current uh, election cycle with all of the different candidates, this was something new. No one had ever seen seen this before. It either was we had to pick one person or the other. And now we had options where we didn't realize we could have options. And I think that alone, even though um, we have gone in this direction, I think it has woken up a lot of people. I think a lot of our Black communities um, are seeing and paying attention to the fact that we can look and look at read these platforms. We can make demands um, because we are the ones, as we keep saying, we are the backbone of the Democratic Party. And so if we're going to continue to be the backbone, then we're going to need to make demands. And I think um, us as political leaders and operatives, Jessica, Tiffany, Christina, and myself, we're able to talk to our communities and help them understand. They trust us. We're from here and we're able to have that conversation. And so I feel that we were already excited um, because one, we definitely want 45 out of the office and we want to see Trump in office. But now this just gives us a new reinvigoration, a new hope. I can't tell you, I I'm pretty sure I can tell you because you already feel what it is that I'm feeling to walk around and know well, I'm about to have a female black vice president. And I, so I feel like this announcement today is going to energize all of us. It's going to re-energize this Democratic Party. And it's going to show black people that, yes, we see you. You are recognized. You not only deserve a seat at the table, but you need to come on in the house and take over. I love that. I love that. And to Chandra's point too, and that's why we want to have to be vigilant across the country about voter suppression because the antics are going to be at an unprecedented level as we already saw in the June primary here in South Carolina. There were longer lines than 2008 when Barack Obama was on the top of the ticket. And so we're going to have to make sure that we are vigilant across the country at every level, down the ballot, like volunteering for campaigns, volunteer for the Democratic parties in your in your states or in your local communities because they're going to need all the support they can get to make sure that every vote is counted in this election. And, and if you do want to volunteer, 
Uh, sorry, I'll get to you, Tiffany. I just want to um, make sure that Q tells if people want to volunteer. How do like some people watch and they're like, well, yeah, I want to volunteer for the Democratic Party, but how do I do that? Where do I go? How do I sign up? I'll defer to Chandra since she's at the part at the um, party. Go ahead, Chandra. <laughs> okay, awesome. You guys can hear me. Yep. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Well, people can just say if for, for interest of this phone call and for of this um, Zoom or I don't even know what I'm on anymore. It's just we're all <laughs> over the place. I'm so excited um, for this live stream. I would say just reach out to me directly. Um, it's Chandra, S-H-A-U-N-D-R-A at SCDP.org. So that's the initials for South Carolina Democratic Party. We also have a voter protection hotline. That hotline is in place if you have any voter related questions or if you are on the day of election and you need assistance, and it's 1-855-785-0222. So either one of those ways, you'll be able to get me, and I shall be expecting tons of emails because I know you guys are going to want to come out and help me protect and represent all these voters so that we can get Biden-Harris in the White House. Excellent. Now, Tiffany, I know you wanted to say something, but I just want to go to Jessica really quickly because she hadn't spoken yet. And I see your microphone keeps coming off mute, then it goes back on mute. So obviously you have something to say, sis. So so speak your piece. Um I I don't have I, I don't have much. I was trying to control the background noise. But oh. <laughs> to the holistic point, I think with this cycle, it was something different, and we have to know. This time, there was an investment in Black women from the beginning in the state of South Carolina. And I think that has changed the dynamics leading up. So like a few years ago, you wouldn't see us on this stream as leaders of different campaigns. And it was a conscious investment. And I think even despite that all of us worked on different campaigns, we still coalesced and we worked together because we had the same mission. We all wanted to get 45 out of office. We all wanted to mobilize and educate our different cohorts of people. We were able to go out and connect with different people from all across South Carolina. And I think this is something that needs to be noted and something that needs to be pushed even further. I think there needs to be more Christina Cues. They need to be more Chandra Scotts and they need to be more Tiffany James. And that that speaks volumes as somebody coming from a small coming from South Carolina where that's uneven that's not even heard of. So I yeah. think really um you know even though we come from different campaigns we still um show show the power of female leadership. And that that power would continue with Kamala. So our next VP. I love it. I love it. All right, Tiffany, I cut you off. My apologies, but please, uh, I got to shift the panel in a second. So close us out. Absolutely. You know what? I just wanted to add on to what Q was saying, Christina Q, um, about voter suppression and, you know, to not um, rule out COVID as a, um, mm -hmm. a possible way. Well, it is, you know, being used as voter suppression as we speak. Um, and it's already cut back on our census, right? So collecting the census data. So um, let's do all we can to combat COVID as well, um, because it's going to be a major, um, it's going to have a major impact on our elections. Definitely. Thank you for bringing that up, because I did. And somebody is a dog, and I am obsessed with dogs, but <laughs> it's, okay. it's you. I, I wish we could see him, but we, we don't have time. We have to shift. But please pay attention to the puppy. He sounds adorable. I love dogs more than people sometimes. Anyway, um, this is a great panel, you guys. Thank you for weighing in with all this info. We gave marching orders to the people joining us. So if you want to volunteer, Chandra said you can contact her. Um, everybody warns you of the efforts to suppress our votes. If you're not in South Carolina and you want to volunteer, you can literally go to dnc.org. Um, or you can just email the campaign and say, hey, I'm willing to phone bank. I'm willing to door knock because all of these things um, will have an impact on, on the election because we know it's a game of, of get out the vote. It's a GOTV effort at this point. So thank you, ladies, uh, for joining me. Thank you, Jessica, Tiffany, Chandra, and Miss Christina Q. I don't know who is going to bring in the next panel, but I'm going to welcome the next panel <laughs> um, when, whenever. I think, I think we have a few more minutes. I think they're, they're telling you you have a few more minutes. Oh, oh really? Because the next, um, I have, uh, we are behind, according to me. We have. Um, we are you know, waiting on your other guests to arrive. Okay. So you have a, you, that gives you a little more extra time to dig into South Carolina. We know how crucial it is and yeah. how pivotal it is to the South. Okay, how come they saw that we have more minutes and I didn't? Anyway, okay. <laughs> oh, I see the chat over here. Okay, thank you, ladies, thank you. Okay, 
<laughs> okay, that's fine. We can talk about it all day. Well, well something I want to ask you guys, since we have more time, um, we saw already today some attacks were leveled against Senator Harris um, directly from the White House. Something I found interesting is Donald Trump, um, like he's never attacked Michelle Obama because he knows better. He never said anything bad about Oprah because he knows better. And I think on some level, we're going to have to put Kamala Harris in that category so this man can know better. Mm -hmm. How do you all suggest that we combat these attacks that are going to come, some from within our own community, um, but much from outside our community, some from foreign election interference that will try again to create a narrative um, ar around Senator Harris that, that already happened on the campaign trail. Um, her campaign was the most targeted by foreign election interference, surprisingly. Um, so how do we combat this? Uh, I, I know everybody's not a, a tech expert, but even just in conversation, you know, where you hear people say, well, I don't know if she really about the people or, you know, I don't know if she's going to flip on us when she gets in office. What do we say to those people? I think my quickest answer to that is um, one of my close, close friends in our um, in our win with black women circle. She responded to the chain um, today and she said, get on message ASAP. And I think that's the message loud and clear to black women everywhere is to get on message. Um, right. And so like whether you're in conversations with, you know, your white friends or, you know, your non black family friends, whatever, you need to stay on message and like get on board because the train is moving and we need all of us to be supporting Kamala Harris. And we all need to stand united because there's going to be enough that's going to try to attack her or try to divide us even as, you know, as people like as black people right some people want to say oh she ain't black and for oh she this oh she that and it's like no get everybody together and they say no let's do a message and let's you know support her because she is history and we want um you know and it's going to take all of us to make make sure that history is made which i'm confident now more than ever that you know i feel like we're good in november we got to do the work but we're going right. to yeah that's not that's how i feel well one of the um criticisms that I've heard from people is that when she was the DA in San Francisco, she made a career of locking up black men. And so one thing that I say to people is Google the demographics of San Francisco and tell me how many black men were, were there when she was the DA. The math just doesn't add up, but this is a narrative that's being perpetuated um, by, by some people. Um, and I really don't think these attacks are coming from within the community, but unfortunately they do penetrate the community. Um, so I really, you know, try to arm people with specific language, with some verbiage to say, this is what you can say when someone says this. And that's my whole thing about San Francisco. They're, they're, statistically, that was just not what her career was built on. Um, but there are other attacks that I think will be levied against her. Today, for some odd reason, the uh, a reporter in the White House, I mean, from some fringe outlet, was like, well, she lied about smoking weed, Donald Trump. Why would she lie about that? What do you think about that? And it's like, is this really what we're talking about? You know, <laughs> or are these are these the issues that we want to uh, elevate? So I write a, a little bit in my book about... Um, you know, some of this is we have to get people on board, but also we have to be good stewards of information. And so we have to encourage our family, our friends, share responsibly. You know, don't just go share something, a meme that looks nefarious. You know, Google is your friend, you know, <laughs> read, read some reputable outlets and make sure that you know what you're talking about. So does anybody else have any suggestions on how to combat some of the attacks that we know are coming. Yeah, um, just to jump in real quick, I, I think it's important to remind people that, um, you know, now that we have a black woman um, that was chosen to be the VP pick, like, why do we expect perfection from her when we didn't expect perfection from, you know, white uh -huh old men that have um, had the same opportunity as her. Um, all we can do is hold her accountable. And I think that she has proven um, on um, the campaign trail that we can hold her accountable um, and that she will do um, right by black women, black people in America as a whole. Um, I really trust that she will. I trust that she um, learned from 
the experience that she's had and that she will um, have an open ear and that she will um, deliver. So um, it's about having trust and believing that, you know, you can't hold people to, you know, perfection. That can't be the standard. I, I love that. I love that language and I'm going to steal it from you. Yes. Uh, when somebody says that, because I think, I mean, that is a way that you're arming people to actually retort when when people say this. So, all right. I am told that the, the other guest is here. So thank you, ladies. This was, was great. Um, you all had a lot of things to say, which is why we could easily extend and not go over our time. So I appreciate you all. Um, for joining me. And now, as we say goodbye to that panel, I'm going to bring in um, former mayor of Flint, Ms. Karen Weaver. So happy to have you Hello. join us. Yes. So we're excited because we, we were here at the beginning. An exciting day. Yes. I it's hope you had something to drink. drink. I need something besides this, but I'm going to use it right now because this is, I mean, this is history. And I'm excited. I was listening to one of the panelists before, and they were talking about why are we expecting perfection? I just said that earlier today. Why do, why do we expect something that's unattainable? Perfection. I love it. And then when we do make a mistake, we get bashed for it instead of saying, what can we do to help and support and uplift? And I think this is a time for Black women especially to say, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to have this sister's back because we know people are coming at her. But I mean, it was so funny. I was taping earlier today and in the middle of taping, someone did a thumbs up and I said, what? They said, Kamala Harris. And we just started <laughs> screaming in the middle of this taping that we were doing. And we said, we're sorry, but I mean, we just got this news and you, you couldn't help yourself. You couldn't help yourself. So I just, it, this is a great day. This is a wonderful I, day. I agree. I think we are all so privileged and blessed to be a part of the biggest, most dynamic sorority. And that is the sisterhood of black yes. women. You know, exactly. black women exactly. are a sorority. It is the magic of who we are that we don't have to know each other, but we can say something and there's a commonality. There's familiarity. Right. We just, right. you know, right. we, we understand. Um, each other. That we know about each other that gives yes. us that commonality and that and that relationship and that sisterhood. And I mean, I, it, it was just like we all rejoiced. We had been waiting with bated breath, like sitting on pins and needles, waiting to see who's it going to be, who's it going to be. And heard the news, and you didn't know whether to, to laugh, cry, you know, dance. Yeah. I mean, all of those things. All you felt all the emotions. Things. All you felt all the emotions. emotions. Yeah. And, I, and, and it did it gave me the extra energy to say, okay, I'm really ready to roll up my sleeves and work harder. I'm right. Ready to work harder as a result of having us validated and having right. us on that ticket. Because that's how it feels like we've all won. We have absolutely won. and, I, and I, I go ahead, finish you know, your I'm thought. Looking at the pic your picture in the back. Shirley. Shirley is here today. Let me exactly. make sure the folks can see it. Shirley had to be a part of the conversation. A wonderful picture. And so to see that see her and, and to know where we are now and you know to say thank you to, to all of the, the 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 men and the women that have just paved the way. I said uh, we have done the grunt work and never gotten the reward. Right. And exactly. Felt like we got the reward. We got so we, we, we got a reward, but like I you know, was saying to the last panelist, this is a nice victory that we can relish, but mm -hmm. the wars to come are uh, quite uh, expansive. And so right. we have a, a lot of battles to continue uh, to fight. And I see that Pamela Pugh is here, so we can definitely Good, because help she her. Been talking and, and celebrating. <laughs> She, she made a cameo and then, oh, there you go. We see you, we see you. This is so exciting. We're all together. So Pamela, you came right on time. Exactly. Uh, we were just celebrating this collective sisterhood uh, that we all belong to. And uh, I was just making the point that um, as we, we have battles still left to fight, the wars to come are quite expansive and that we're going to have to tonight. I'm sorry. You're celebrating tonight. Yes. Oh, we sure are. We definitely. Sure are. We're going to celebrate for a while. 
Absolutely. But as we celebrate, we are putting on our armor exactly. <laughs> to make sure. Armor. That's right. That's right. Because um, I mean, we we have some some fights left, and I think uh, you know while we're celebrating that we have to strategize around how to usher this team over the finish line, and so. Um, Pamela, you missed our our air toast, our virgin toast. You might not. The mayor didn't I have. It. I need something this, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use it. We're so. I mean, just uh, an exciting night. So, Pamela, that? before <laughs> Pamela, before we we get into the strategy, just tell us, give us a, a testify on how you feel in the night, sister. That's what we want to hear first. I am just full. I mean, for us to come together to stand our ground, to stand for what we knew was just and what was right. And that was this historic moment. Uh, I think about my mom, who I wrote about, and uh, we celebrated her home going for years. But just, I thought about her, but I think about my niece, Andrea Pugh, uh, who was a part of this movement and pushed to get us just to this point. But we know we have so much more to do. But I think about those generations that are able to watch this. But I think about my mom uh, and and how beautiful a moment this this is for her generation. And if she were here, mm -hmm. and I just screamed and I cried and I screamed and I smiled and I cried, and it was just. Uh, exciting moment. And like you all said, we have so much more to do to get this ticket over the finish line, uh, but also to support uh, our sister. And we want to make sure that everyone celebrates in this. We know we are Black women. I heard us talking about the pink and green women we celebrate, uh, but our women who wear red, our women who wear blue, we all celebrate the people in brown skin, black skin, white skin are celebrating this moment. I got inboxes from from uh, all type, all people of all walks of life, and so this is just a historic moment. And I mean, off to Vice President Biden, who uh, made this, this pick, this very wise pick, and so now we're ready to fight. We're ready. We're, we're ready to. We're energized, and we're ready to go. I, I love to see it, and I'll just um, move us along because our, our next panelist is here, but I, I just want to say before I let you ladies go that um, particularly to, to you, Mayor Weaver, because what I've noticed this year, um, but really since Trump has been in office, but especially this year as we battle all of these challenges that are plaguing mm -hmm. our country right now, our lives, our livelihoods, um, that there has been this surge of Black women leaders who are bypassing basic, average, ordinary men <laughs> who are incapable of leading, as we see in Georgia, as we see in Florida. And so it just feels like it's our time. And I'm very careful when I say that because I never want to give somebody the impression that it hadn't been our time. <laughs> It's, it's past our time. And it, it, it is our time. And, it, and But that's because we've been doing the work. It's right. It's nothing new for us. You know, we've always had to do double the work, triple the work, and we've put it in. It's, it's just what we do. And it's what yeah. we've been doing. And now we finally, you know, people are seeing it. And we're in a place where we get to show it. And, and, um, it, it's just exciting. It's not surprising. People, we've right. always been, uh, People have low expectations of us for some reason. I don't mm -hmm. understand that. Uh, but but uh, we always rise to the occasion. You know, it's like, and still we rise because that's what we do. Okay. And that's what we've had to do to get through and to make a way. And that's why I said we've always done this grunt work and never gotten the reward. So we've been doing this. You know, we've been doing it for years and generations. And like Dr. Pugh said, I mean, this was our grandmothers and our great grandmothers yes. and our mothers and our aunts. And, and so we've witnessed it. They might not have had the platforms that we have now, but we've witnessed what they've shown us. And had they not done what they had done, you know, I mean, we're standing on their backs. That's right. right. In That's the right. roles that they have had. That's and right. I was telling someone, I said, it's like that T-shirt says, we are their wildest dream. 
and I'm, I'm, you know, and, and that's what we're showing them. That's what we're showing them. So the world better watch out because black women are here and we are here to stay and we're going to show them what we're made of. If they and we ain't going back. back. Yeah. That's right. Right. There you go. <laughs> Pam, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. Ladies, this was, this, was, this was so great. Um, I'm so excited to be in this space with you all. Thank you for joining me. Thank I'm going to keep us moving to the next panel, but your, your panel was amazing. So thank you. I feel... I feel the digital love. So, and yes, exactly. hey, we so have, <laughs> oh my Lord, Amanda yeah. Brown is doing What's up, Tip Tip? Looking like a American <laughs> Next Top model, baby. Listen, I, I, listen. I had, yeah, you know, I had to rep for my, you know, for the for the future VP. I had to rep for my store. And my sorority right. watching, but I feel like the whole every every member of the divine nine, every person with an ounce of melanin is celebrating tonight, and it's just That's it's right. just amazing. I was just telling the, the ladies before you that this um feels like such a blessing to be a part of this amazing sorority mm -hmm. of black women. Of black women, yes. The commonality we have and the way that we communicate with each other. Um, the mayor was making the point that we don't even have to know each other, no. but we know each other. But you we know? know each other, and that's what and that's what sisterhood is. And I, I thought about it. I think about it a lot, even in Hollywood. When we're moving through spaces, we see each other and we nod. You know what I mean? It's just that that understanding of I don't have to know you to know you. I don't yeah. have to to walk beside you to know the path that you've walked. And um, that's what makes tonight just a a, a way to rejoice for all of us. It's amazing. I am so excited. And I, you know, it's been a long journey. Um, I'm curious from you because you're very politically active. You're very mm -hmm. politically vocal. Um, and you get you get excited about politics. I do. Um, you expressed a lot of opinions on the campaign trail. Um, and now we've landed here. So looking back since the beginning of this election cycle and considering all the people that you were excited about, how do you feel at this moment um, about the people who weren't chosen? Um, and how do you feel about the person who is who was chosen? Obviously, Senator Harris. Well, from the oh, very be from the very beginning, my three that I loved that were running were Castro, Warren, and Harris. I I stand for all of them. I was amplifying everything they put out. I was supporting each of them. I was heartbroken when Castro and 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 Kamala dropped out before you know we got a chance to actually vote. Um, so you know my my excitement about this moment is like losing something that was really precious to you and then getting it back and getting it back in a way you didn't expect. But the beautiful thing about the way we're getting Kamala back is that this can be the first step to the step that she should have been able to complete in the primary. So it's like really like a full circle moment. Um, and I can't wait to see what the next eight years are like and what her next eight years are like. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to like 16 years of this. Um, as for the ones that weren't chosen, um, I really, you know, I already said, I loved Elizabeth Warren. I loved Val Demings. I loved Stacey Abrams. I know that she was out of the running a little bit earlier. Um, and I even loved Karen Bass and, and Susan Rice. Like it, it, it was, it was a cornucopia of riches. It was like an embarrassment of fierce, amazing, whip smart, principled, women to choose from. And so many of them looked like me that I was dancing every day. I, I posted on Twitter all the time, you know, whoever he chooses, I'm good. Yeah. And I meant that, you know what I mean? But it was one, I was like, no, don't do that. But <laughs> y'all know who I was like, don't you Same. dare. Same. <laughs> now, wait, now, wait a minute. But everyone else, I was like, this is going to be great because I, because I'm into politics. I knew everybody's policies. I knew where they stood on things. And, you know, I just understood who would be good for us? And that's yeah. what I wanted. Someone who would be good for us. And Kamala, Sora Kamala is going to be good for us. Yeah. And I, I asked about the other woman because mm -hmm. I'm just trying to punctuate the point that there is an embarrassment of riches there was. among black women. And we can compete against each other. But when it's all said and done, it's like, yes, yeah, since you got it, you did yes. it. And now I'm going to ride with you and push you over to the top because we need more voices yes. than the most senior levels of government. Before Senator Harris was named as the um, VP, uh, as Joe Biden's running mate, she was the most senior black woman in federal government. Yes. And I, you know, I don't think a lot of people really recognize that. And I think there were, you know, a lot of criticisms of her on the yes. campaign trail. But I, you know, I wrote in, in my book that I think people at the end will galvanize around her and be excited. Yeah. 
as VP. And look, here we are. She's VP. Listen, I was, no, I was Negro Diamonds in my book. And I didn't even know it. <laughs> and everybody and everybody is excited, which is what we needed. We needed this this final push, like we all know that we had to vote for Joe Biden. We knew it, we all were going to do it. But now we have like that extra bit of like, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I really, I was gonna vote for him anyway, but now I'm like, yes, I'm gonna skip to the to the polls or skip to my mailbox if I'm voting by mail. Like it's just a, it's a different feeling. And you know, it's something that if I'm honest, I didn't even think this could be possible. I didn't. And, and that's from being a black woman in America for her, her mm -hmm. amount of years. My birthday's yeah. tomorrow, by the way. Um, I did, yeah, I'll be 25 tomorrow, girl. I'll be 25. Everybody, 21, at home, girl. everybody at home, stop laughing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'm old enough to know that this was not guaranteed. I'm old enough to yeah. know that, and I'm old enough to know also that even if we didn't get it, we all, Black women, would have dutifully shown up to vote, you know, with, with a heavier heart. You know, maybe yeah. a little a little bummed out because we it wasn't our turn again. Yeah. But thankfully, that's not this year. This year yeah. we get to go vote for us. That's I love right. it. I love and it. And have a different energy at the ballot box. So I want to ask you, since you uh, are a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. What was that? What was that? Um, since you are a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Yes, here. Um, what role do you think the AKAs will play and really the divine nine? Because I do think even though we're all, you know, sisters, I do think there is a unique bond that uh, black Greeks have. Mm -hmm. And so um, and the black Greek bond and the HBCU bond. Yes. So Senator Harris touches on both of those. How do you see that playing out on the campaign trail? I think everybody's going to roll up their sleeves and show up. I mean, I feel like, like I said before, we were all on board to vote for Biden, but now it's like, who I need to phone bank with? Who I, do I need to call? Do I need to knock on doors? You know, it's it's more a, we feel like we're fighting for family. You know, we've got a horse in the race for the first time. And 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 aside from Barack, we haven't had this feeling of feeling like someone that that has our issues, our concerns, or has walked our path in life gets to make decisions that benefit us. And the great thing about Kamala is that she knows us from every side. She knows it as an immigrant. She knows it as, you know, someone trying to make it in politics for the first time. She knows it as a woman and people are are are, are voting against her or believing that she can't make it. She understands what it is to be underestimated and to be an underdog. And that's our life as, as people of color, as black people in this country, we're always the scrappy underdog. Little yeah. do they know we're black excellence. We're That's amazing. Right. But Bobby. at the same time, we got to get up in there and duke it out sometimes for the things that should be just handed to us because of our excellence. So I'm glad that she got what she earned and yeah. what she deserved. This was not yes. a handout. This was not a, oh, you have melanin. Here you go. That's not what this was. You know, I had, I, the, I, had, the, I had the blessing of um, interviewing her and, the, and, and also um, Senators Klobuchar, um, Gillibrand and Warren last week for Emily's List. And it was my first time with her, like in that moment where it's me looking in a, a Zoom camera at her. And I, I realized why she's so amazing. She's got this magnetism. She has that thing where when you're talking to her, you're the only person in the room, right? Mm -hmm. So that thing is where she sees you. She mm -hmm. sees you. And I think that comes from being the daughter of immigrants. That comes from being a, a black woman. That comes from being going to HBCUs. Like you, you understand what it's like to be solidly in your space in America and considered other like no one else understands. So she's That's just, true. she's all of that. I agree. And you, you said that we have to get scrappy and, you know, fight. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think the flip side of that is we show up the next day rolling up our sleeves ready to work and nobody knows that we got parents we were taking care of we right. got trauma in our right own here. life yeah. we got a man acting a fool that we Come were arguing on. with till three in the morning, you know and all that we still show up that's smile, right we're not allowed to you know be short with people we can't have right. every black woman it's the magic and duality of our kind that I just don't think a lot of other people can relate to um, or understand. So can I, I just say, I know this is Kamala's moment, but can I just take a moment to just tell you how proud I am of you and how getting to see you on Hosted Amjoy and see you flip from putting somebody in their place where they belong <laughs> to then covering, you know, John Lewis's uh, home going, sis. You you are every woman. It's all in you. You were amazing. You, I love girl. your book. I love you. I'm rooting for you to win in every area of your life. Thank you. I so appreciate yes. you. See, this is the sorority I'm talking about. This is what is a sisterhood. This is black sisterhood. Yes. It's our time. It's our time. And I really I I feel like when these moments happen, I really do relish 
and coming together mm-hmm. with women. You know, yeah. it's just something about when we're in our own space, mm-hmm. when it's just us, mm-hmm. there really is a, a sisterhood That's there. Right. That, uh, right now, it's just you and I on screen, but so many people across the country are joining yes. us. Right now. People are literally texting me screenshots of us. I love it. Girl, send me some once you're done hosting. I, I got you. you. I got you. One of the funny things I thought today um, when people were on air mm-hmm. and everybody was saying, man, I'm getting so many texts. And on uh, Ari Melbourne, he was saying, oh, well, read us some of the texts. And I was laughing because I'm like, I know it's some text I can't read. I can't read. I, and there's a couple that, that Jason shouldn't have read. I was like, what are you doing reading that text? He wasn't thinking. He just scrolling and just reading. I can't read. I can't do that. I can't read my friends. I know. Text on TV. I, know. <laughs> I mean, and I, I thought about my own text and I was like, I couldn't read these texts. If anybody here. saw our text, Tiffany, that we'd be in trouble. So <laughs> listen. Listen. Exactly. And that, I think that's the other thing about black women. We speak a language. We that did. not everybody you might recognize the words, but you don't understand what you don't understand. Saying. You know, we can we just one one listen or one <laughs> child, girl. <laughs> it's everything. The whole world is in one word. One word. The tone, the time of our mm-hmm. voice. Mm-hmm. Cock yeah. of our head. Mm-hmm. It's the whole thing. I'm really yes. so this is the one thing I will say I'm a little concerned about on the campaign trail. Okay. I am so excited to see Senator Harris on the debate stage mm. with Mike Pence. I can't what wait. What I would like to see is Senator Harris on the debate stage with Donald Trump. With Donald Trump. He is, <laughs> he is so scared, girl. He is so scared. The only word he could come up with today was nasty. And you know he only uses yeah. that one when he's really terrified of a woman. So exactly. that is very exciting to see that N-word come out today, that particular one. Yes, exactly. We, we wish we he would have dropped the other we, N-word. We, I wish he would. I wish I'm not, not on Black Lives Matter Plaza. You ain't about to do that today. <laughs> not today. So let me ask you, because I asked the last panel, and I think this is something mm-hmm. that as, as Black women, we all have to be prepared for. There are going to be some critiques, some criticisms. Um, and I, you know, some of this stuff I'm okay with, because I'm mm-hmm. like, yes, these are public servants. Mm-hmm. Um, her position is not elected as his running mate, but she would be a public servant yep. here. You know, Kamala Harris for the people, as she says. Um what are some things that you would say? Because there's misinformation floating mm-hmm. out there. So for people who are like, ah, I'm just not convinced yet. Not that they're not going to vote, but people who aren't convinced will show up and vote. They're not necessarily organizing and mm-hmm. bringing in people. So what do you say to people who are like, yeah, I see all these black women excited about it, but I don't know. Well, you know, I, I would say the same thing that I said on Twitter today when it was a hubbub about, well, I don't, if you don't pick this one, I don't know what, listen, I was like, whoever he picks, I'm in. There are thousands of people dying every single day, every single day. And there's no one in the White House that is trying to keep any of us alive. Not the babies at the border, not not the, the black people with boots on their neck in the streets. So the whole point is, if you want to live, let's just take it to the base level. Yeah. If you want to live. You need to vote Biden Harris and you need to organize for Biden Harris because there's so much shady stuff afoot. Like I I feel like with the poll numbers that Trump should be more worried than he is, which tells me he knows something like I want every every state that is like on the borderline. I want the ACLU to be there from day one. I need those machines to be swiped. I need everything to be checked because he's too calm about the fact that he's about to lose in a landslide unless he knows that he's not. So that means we need to vote at a level that cannot be fixed or switched yeah. or cheated around. So that yeah. means every hen in the hen house needs to go, hey, these are the two people we need to have in there fixing this in, in January. The the win, the victory has to be decisive. Decisive. Very concerned that we may not know who the president is on November 3rd. I mean, we may be, I'm old enough to remember Bush v. Gore. I'll cover that, too. that debacle. So we may be in another situation like that. Where it's going to play out in the courts. This man has like plied these courts with over 200 conservative justices. So, you know, this is an example of um, elections having consequences. Consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that people pay attention. There was a rapper, I can't think of his name now, but he's from Ohio, I think Canton, Ohio, where he did a whole rap about civics and explained to people why it's important to vote in every single election for every single thing. I don't care if it's dog catcher, alderman, uh, whoever gonna paint the streets, whatever, whatever's on the on the ballot, 
You need to vote every single time because each of those people decide even more than the federal government what happens to you personally in your city. And I think we we don't pay enough attention in civics class to understand how it all you know yokes up together. And I think that's why people think that everything lies with the president. So if they're not excited about who's running for president, they just yeah. tap out. Can't yeah. do it. You better get in there and vote blue, crawl up and down. Just paint the whole ballot blue. All of it. I have to tell you, I was at, um, I was in LA. I saw you when I was there. Yes. Um, but I, I went to a, a, a dinner, this like industry dinner for mm -hmm. like people in the music industry. And I was there with a woman who was an aspiring actress. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned um, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And she said, who is Kamala Harris? This was last, I think this was last September when, when I was there. And I was so stunned. And so um, she had literally never heard of her. And I'm like, this is your home state yeah. senator. Like, yeah. you know? And there were other people in the industry who they were like, oh yeah, and she running for president. I mean, it was like that. What do you anticipate the Hollywood landscape doing at this time? Um, you know, obviously there are folks like Tracy Ellis Ross and mm -hmm. you know, people who are very outspoken and political, Tina Arnold, um, mm -hmm. people who are outspoken and politically active. But for those of us who work in politics and we're on the other coast, like how, what's the conversation like around politics among the famous and you know, the, the Hollywood elites? Like, well, listen, tell us, please. I don't, listen, I don't know that the fancy pants people, I'm, I'm from <laughs> Cleveland, I'm regular as they come. So I don't, yeah. I don't know what they are talking about in the, in the, in the mansions and whatnot. Um, I know for me, all of my friends that happen to be actors as well or singers as well are very politically minded. Um, we use our Instagram pages and our Twitter pages to try to push out and amplify as much information as we can. And I've become sort of the person that people call when they're like, well, I don't know what I should do. And what, what is this person? Why does this person feel about this versus this person? So I think that the best thing we can do, those of us that do know and do care, we need to just keep talking. We need yeah. to keep amplifying. You know, you can't make people care about people. And that's the thing when I when I always talk about how I pick who I vote for, it always starts with do they care about people? Because you can learn anything else, but you can't learn soul and heart. So if you're someone that doesn't care about anybody but yourself or your family or whatever orange people you create, I don't know what that man does. If you're someone that only thinks like that, then you can't see beyond your little bubble to think about what other people need. So I'm always looking for people that love and care and that kind of thing. So I feel like if you start there, you can't go wrong. And so when I talk to people, I just kind of go, you know, what is, what's your heart telling you? What do you feel? And yeah. then also kind of get to them and go, you know, do you care about your kids <laughs> or your yeah. mom? You yeah. know what I mean? Do you want there to be clean air and, you know, some, some, some food to eat? You know, you want us not to be on fire with climate change. All of these yeah. things matter. They all matter. Then you got to yeah. vote. I think what's interesting about what you said is that you're like this ambassador, this political mm -hmm. ambassador there. And so as people are wondering, well, what can I do? I think just the fact of being well read on the mm -hmm. issues of knowing people's plans and, you know, really filtering this information and, and sharing it with people and maybe presenting it to them in yeah. a way that's digestible, that they don't feel so overwhelmed by this bureaucracy or highbrow political speak right. that tends to happen in, in the beltway. But just saying, look, let me make it plain. Here's what right. it is. That's a hugely important role. And I know you are on Twitter, you have a huge Twitter following. And I think, you know, engaging other influencers um, on, on the West Coast is, I think, really important work. And, I, you know, I imagine, I hope the campaign will engage you because you can certainly be a benefit to them. Um, I'm hoping these uh, validators. And so we had somebody from the campaign on earlier. Um, mm -hmm. but yes, we should make sure to, to connect you as we have this moment of celebration. I, I would love yeah. it if I'm able to travel or do anything before the election, I'll even do that. Like I want to go to Cleveland and see what I can do back home. Like it's, it really, oh, I've been yeah. saying this, okay. listen, I've been saying it from the beginning. It's all hands on deck. Like everybody needs to figure out what they can do. If it's phone banking, if it's, if it's going around and knocking on doors, if it's putting a sign in your, in your, um, in your front yard. Whatever it is that you personally can do to let people know that this is the election of our lifetime, you have to do that. You have to do that. And I think the bigger thing right now are the people that don't vote. You know what I mean? That those of us that do vote, we kind of picked our we picked our our place long ago. But there are people that like millions of people that just don't think it's worth it. And that's where I wish some of the A-list celebrities that had these huge followings who yeah. haven't dipped a toe into politics yet would just dip a toe in and go, hey guys. 
you know, put a put a voter registration or something as, as a part of yeah. your 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 album that you release, or when you when you do a movie or a TV show, put, at the bottom of the tweet, just put you know. And by the way, have you gone to when we all vote or vote.org to make sure you're registered? Like those types of things matter, and I think people we've seen with the the person that is running or not running, and we don't know what the heck he's doing. There are people that will vote for him just because he says he's running, right? Yeah. Which means that if that same person with those millions of followers had told everybody to vote and to possibly consider Biden and Harris, then maybe he could get some people that can't be bothered to actually show up. Like this, you gotta use your platform for good. I completely agree. And I hope more people will do that. I mean, mm -hmm. if not now, when? Um, so this has been great because I, I know that you had a lot to do. Yvette Nicole Brown, y'all, she <laughs> had a meeting and other work to do. And I threw I'm it away. And she said, I'm coming. Um, but don't swipe away yet because I think Joy Reed is joining. And she's I just want to, she's coming in. And I want y'all to say hi before I pass the pass the mic um to to, to Joy. She's fresh from <laughs> the set, y'all. Fresh from the ring house. Listen, I, I saw that outfit about five minutes ago. <laughs> I, I think you in that. I, I I went from the basement. To like one floor up, so I, I think, love it. You know, we all moving on up today. So I, I love it. I'm sitting here trying to get my screen uh -huh. capture because I ain't never been in a box with the two of y'all. Let me smile. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. This is so exciting, and it's so exciting to be here with you, ladies. And listen, um, I think it's great to let everybody share our excitement that we typically share in text. Yes, in the actual, not the full real world because we're still virtual. But I'm so proud of us today, y'all. As Black women, I feel like history has been made. And yes. It's never be unmade. This That's is a right. Moment. I love it. It's a I love moment. It. It's a moment. So I'm, I'm passing the mic to Joy. Okay. Yvette, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, thank you for having me. Joy, you have a great run on here. Thank you very much. I'm going to have a great time. Y'all have the great rest of the night. I'm going to clink clink to y'all because, you know, I poured a little do, bit. Do it. Listen, as you I should. Now, I'm like, I ain't got nothing but water, yeah. dog on it. I got water. Water. I'm about to go get it. it. Where is Latasha? Oh, you gonna sing? I need Latasha to sing. Latasha, you bless us with a song. You got a song in your heart, girl. Give us a song. Give us one song before we leave. Yeah. Y'all know a sister will sing. I'll tell yes. you the most appropriate song. Well, the first thing I did right. Was yes. the day I started to fight. Hey. Keep your eyes on the prize and yes. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Keep your eyes on the prize and yes. hold on, hold on. We just got to hold on, sisters. Yes. 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 Keep our eyes on the prize yes. now. We yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Love you all. Amen. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Mark. Go. Say it louder. Say it louder. I had it. I had it in the back. I said, let me go bring it closer so y'all know what to buy. So sometimes y'all need to see it. Oh, right up close. There's a little UPS. Y'all better pick this book up if you want to understand because she is Negro Thomas. And this is gonna happen. I want to write about Kamala Harris as a potential um, VP and a potential president yeah. in my book as well. But right now, this is what y'all need to get. All right. Thank you, guys. Am I All a part right. of this or am I saying goodbye? No, I think you should stay. I think I like the quad. I like the quad. So we're going to move you to into the panel. I want to introduce everybody else that we have here. Of course, you just heard the beautiful sound. Oh, wait, where did Timothy <laughs> go? The beautiful sound of Natasha Brown who um, I, my, my nickname for her is Can't Stop, Won't Stop, because that's what I first heard of Latasha Brown when she said they're going to try to keep us from being able to vote and being able to have our votes count. Can't Stop, Won't Stop. So Can't Stop, Won't Stop, Latasha Brown is here. Uh, my buddy Mark Thompson, uh, civil rights activist, uh, you know, reparations activist, uh, another one of my text pals. These are all my text. This is like a text pal thing we're doing. Yes, and of course, my, my, my Miss Tiffany Cross, who I feel so sorry for that poor Republican. The king. <laughs> I had my little slippers on. I was comfortable. I thought I was gonna sit back and watch AM Joy. You know, because I never get to watch it because I'm normally hosting it. And then I just saw her kill a man on live TV. And I said, I, I don't think I was ready first thing in the morning to watch a, a woman kill a man on. on live TV. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. But well, today, I should, I should I mean, tell you, Joy that um i'm i'm guest hosting again this weekend yes. that you will be getting a phone call from the bookers okay 
<laughs> to see if you can just join so we can have this celebration on AM Joy. I, I love it. And as long as you are okay with me wearing my slippers, but I will dress you from the top up. I mean, I have a little dress on the you know. I did a little extra just <laughs> for the historic dress. But just yeah, so you know, on, um, this weekend, I, on this weekend, I will be having back on my slippers and my Adidas sweats. But let's get to the panel. Let's get into it. I want to get everyone to weigh in on the history of this. Of course, Tiffany, you've just been leading this brilliant panel and the wonderful event Nicole Brown was on with you. But I want to let you now be the panelist. Tell That's me how it. this feels as the author of Say It Louder, somebody who has spent the last right. year really thinking about, thinking about the media and the way that black people are presented in, in American politics. How, how did this strike you today? Uh, it is historic, obviously. Uh, Shirley is joining us for the conversation um, because this is her moment. I loved how you opened the show, Joy, um, mm -hmm. by showing literal sound um, from Shirley Chisholm. And I think it centers not only our politics, but everything. I think this is the era of black women and we are not going back, it's irrevocable. This is our time um, and it's been a long time coming. I, I was saying earlier, I don't wanna say when it's our time to, to, to suggest that it's just now our time. Yeah. It's been our time. And so the fact that we've had, it's like a, a young person who finally gets a rap deal and their first album is dope. They've had yeah. songs for like decades. That's where we are right now. So just get ready to be flooded with some brilliance across every spectrum. And yeah. I remember when, when Senator Harris was first out here and people were saying, um, they were covering her campaign and she had an event and a reporter did not understand. <laughs> she thought it was screeching. She didn't understand the AKA call. Mm. And I just feel like, you know, um, if you watched the readout this evening, if you watch me guest host this weekend, you gonna know some black stuff real yeah. quick. You gonna yeah. know the lingo, you gonna know yeah. about the HBCU life, you gonna yeah. know about the sororities, you gonna know about the Divine Nine. I mean, Joy, when you were on R, you were just like dropping it, like, oh, all the Divine Nine. And I was thinking, you know, I wonder if white people know what we talked about. We said these things. You know, it's so funny. That is I, I, you know what? Afterwards, I realized that people probably didn't know what I was talking about. Right. Yeah. That the, that who the divine nine are. But if they're going to yeah. get this will be an education for a lot of people about right. black culture. And right. you know, thank God. And look who's joined us. Melanie. 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 Join the party. Yes. The party just so let me, yeah. let me come on to and actually let me let me jump to um, to Melanie. Let me since you just joined the panel. We're going to go ladies first. We're going to get you in here, too. We're going to go ladies first. Melanie Campbell. <laughs> Your thoughts today, because you are one of many women who was calling very um, urgently for a black woman to be added to this ticket. This has happened now. Your thoughts? Oh my God! I just thought about my mom. Hmm. I just thought about my mom. I thought about my mom. I really oh. did. And then I thought about so many. Things. I my little great niece looking at me like, Auntie, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What's so so she president, you know, you know. So when does he get her office? I mean, what well, she's seven, right? She's yeah. seven. And so in that moment, like so many sisters, honestly, I don't know, I cried. Yeah. I cried. I couldn't figure out why I was crying. Everybody I got on the phone with started crying. We were just crying. <laughs> We were crying out and, and celebrating this moment and knowing that we are seen. Yeah. Right. We are seen. That's how I knew we responded. And Absolutely. now, you know, and then, then I started yeah. my political hat on. And my political hat says, okay, it's on. Yes. Okay. And we got yes. and they're coming for us, but they don't know what's coming for them. <laughs> they have no idea. No idea. Uh, let me acknowledge. To come on, talk that nasty talk. Talk about nasty. You ain't seen nasty. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Right. I'm talking with Melanie Campbell right now. I ain't wearing my C3 hat right now. I'm Melanie Campbell, Mrs. Lisa, Mrs. Buckley, what the heck I want. That's right. That's what time it is. And yeah. I'm just excited. I'm excited. And, I, and, and allowing ourselves to celebrate the moment. Tomorrow get to work. Absolutely. All right. I want to acknowledge that uh, Maya Rocky Moore Cummings has joined the call. I'm so happy to see you. 
Um, it's, 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 it's actually lifting my spirits even further. And they were already pretty high uh, on today. Uh, Maya, of course, who is uh, the wife of the great Elijah Cummings, who we lost uh, so recently, uh, but in her own right, is somebody who's been a congressional staffer, a, a candidate for office, um, a leader in her own right. Uh, your, your speech um, for your husband's, um, the ceremony they did in DC was earth shattering. It was, uh, you're a brilliant, brilliant person in your own right and so worthy of joining this celebration. So I wanna allow you to tell us, how do you feel uh, seeing this happen today? So I feel, uh, thank you. I, first of all, you know, it's a great being with you with all these wonderful stellar leaders that you have on your show. And I'm so glad uh, to actually get to tell you congratulations about your show in person. Thank, thank uh, you. So it's great, uh, you know, great to see you on television every night. Uh, I feel great. This is fantastic. I am just super excited uh, that Biden, uh, you know, selected uh, Senator Kamala Harris uh, she is proven. She is tested. Uh, she's ready to go on day one. Uh, you know, she's ready to act, serve uh, if she needs to step into any kind of role. Uh, she's got a national following, an international following. Uh, somebody said earlier, you know, watch the the West Indian voting block. Uh, right? They, I know that they are. <laughs> <laughs> the same stream of, I mean, they don't know what's about to hit them. No. Uh, that combined with African Americans, Indian Americans, and everybody else, I think that uh, we're certainly uh, going to see the strength of a, a very multifaceted uh, voting block in this election. I think that Biden uh, has uh, added excitement to his ticket. Uh, and so with that, I see a lot of people being mobilized and interested in this race. And, and with that, I think it's the perfect time to go to Latasha because this is where you come in. Uh, you're out there actually in the streets, you know, getting people to, to come to the polls. And I asked you this on the show earlier tonight on the readout, but I'll ask you again, does this make your job easier? It absolutely does. I'm like, let, give me something to work with. That's <laughs> something to work with. That yes. literally women, when black women, um, and I think it's really interesting when women walk in the room, when we enter the room, you know, Dr. Janetta Cole, says this, you know, when black women enter, but when we enter, when we break down that glass ceiling and that space, light enters the room. And so ultimately, I think having a woman on the ticket energizes women like Melanie Campbell, who is my leader, and literally actually helped bring me into this work years ago. Right? And so I just want to say that part of what women do is that we open up space for others to come through. Yeah. And so I think yeah. that that's what the significance of her in this moment, that one that is not just She's, she's there because of the work of millions of women before yes. her, something nameless that we don't know. But she's also going to crack that glass yes. and break that. She's already shattered, you know, some of those concepts that I think that is also going to create more space for us. Yes. But I don't know about anybody else, but tonight I am celebrating and lifting up black women because we got it going on. They better be, get ready. They better Almost, I think TJ should say that. You better get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I will note, of course, that Latasha Brown was also one of the other, uh, on another separate call for Donald Trump that ran in the Washington Post calling for Biden to do exactly this, to pick a black woman on his ticket. He listened. And that's, that says something good about him. I want to bring in my friend, Mark Thompson. And I, I rapidly text, I rush text Mark because I realized, you know, we need to also have this diaspora conversation. And so I really was hoping that you would be available on short notice and you were, Brother Thompson. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna hold up another book. I already held the Tiffany's book. Here's another book. This is uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, um, also a friend of all of ours, who also made history today as the first black woman chief of staff and probably the first black chief of staff to a vice president of the United States. Well, we sometimes forget that staff in DC and Tiffany Thompson's is one of the least integrated entities in American life. I'll say that again, the staff in DC is so rare yeah. to black people, and Maya knows this too, having worked on the Hill. To find black staff is so difficult, uh, rising through the ranks to high levels. And this sister right here is also a history maker. She's also Haitian American. Um, I, I led tonight with Shirley Chisholm, who was my mother's hero, um, who she ran for office uh, in 1972 and then she did like a tour around the country. At one point she came to Denver, Colorado 
And I was uh, four years old. My, I don't remember. My sister was one year older, so she remembers it. That she came to Denver, and apparently I charmed the heck out of her. So apparently I was charming to Shirley. So I'm very proud of that. Um, but the reason my mother loved her is because she was part Guyanese. She was Panama, um, she was Bahamian and Guyanese. And so there is also this diasporal moment that we're having right now, Mark, where you have somebody whose father is Jamaican, her mom was Indian, um, she is born in the United States, so she is a Black American who went to Howard and the AKA. She kind of wraps a lot in her. How is that significant in your view? Well, it's very significant. First of all, it's so good to see all of you queens whom I love dearly, and I've been very close to Maya. It's so good to see you as well. Um, like Melanie, I'm thinking about my two parent household right now, which was my mother and grandmother. Um, Joy, you had Tennessee State and Howard University on tonight. Yeah. My grandmother graduated from Tennessee State in 1935. And my mother gave birth to me while she was a senior on the campus of Howard University. Wow. I'm unworthy to be here, I think, as a dude, but I do call myself a feminist. And I am as elated as all of you are that a black woman is on the ticket. As far as the diaspora is concerned, you're absolutely right. This is very important. I'm hearing from Jamaican friends, friends throughout the Caribbean. I'm hearing from Asian friends too about how important this is. And I think that's gonna override some of the foolishness because to be clear, the trolls have already been reactivated even tonight. But I think it's going to override that. And I think people are going to see just how important it is to have a woman in this position, to have a woman of color in this position, and to have so many members of the family throughout yeah. the diaspora be able uh, to claim her. And I pray, and I want to say this to my brethren, you know, some of the brothers who signed on to the letter with me yesterday, the 100 yeah. Black Men, mm -hmm. But in to some of the negativity that the trolls attacked Kamala with that sidelined her campaign in 2019. Black men, we have got to support this system. We've got to let all that other foolishness go, all that pop stuff, all that really black stuff. Trump is going to target black men to try yeah. to get us to stay home. And I'm going to do everything I can as the black men to inform my brethren why we don't need to do that. And I hope to yesterday was a start to black men standing strong with this black woman. You know, and, and with that, I'm gonna go to my beyondologist, uh, Tiffany Cross, <laughs> um, because you know, as all day I've been thinking that, you know, that's gonna get information, right? Okay, ladies, now let's get information. I, you know, I, I, I've been talking a lot with black women about this idea of whether or not there should whether it's necessary to have a black woman on the ticket from sort of all over the place, from all over the diaspora. And I've just been taking the temperature of all of these women. And, you know, there were some people who specifically wanted Kamala Harris. There were some people who just wanted any black woman. There was, you know, there's been a range. Um, and there's some, uh, to Mark's point, um, even black women who bought into some of the tropes about Kamala Harris during the campaign and didn't choose her um, as their choice um, for president, but who then had a sense of remorse. I don't know if the other, the other panelists um, have sensed this too, that there were a lot of people who felt like, ah, oh, we missed our chance. Yeah. That she was running, people didn't get information for her. And now yeah. that they have a second chance at being able to vote for her. I had a lot of people who were skeptics literally the day before. Yeah, yeah. How excited and elated they were today. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I've, I've talked about this and I, I write a bit about it uh, in my book. I have a whole uh, chapter on, um, on on Senator Harris. And I, I do think that that there were times that um, <laughs> thank you. I, I judged her, I think, fairly. Um, I as you know, an analyst, I assessed her campaign fairly the same way I did everyone else. But when she left that the campaign trail and we were left with this kind of trio of white men who the media kept elevating, I did start to think I was judging her on the same level as Mayor Pete, on the same level as Joe Biden, and not taking into consideration what as a black woman, her ascending to this level, her running a campaign is different. 
And, you know, some, some people may not understand that, but what it takes for us, what it takes for all of us right now, all six of these little boxes, what it took for all six of us to land here in whatever capacity of life we're doing right now is real different for a lot of other privileged folks. Yeah. And so I know for me, I did feel like, you know, I should have taken into consideration that she was starting from here while other people were starting from here. And I think as an analyst, I have that. But I also think um, a lot of people who are just like, eh, I don't know. Or these are people who are AKAs, people who went to Howard. And they were like, eh, I don't know. I kind of like this person. I kind of like that person. We'll see. And now that she's back, people are like, oh, thank God. Thank God she <laughs> came back. No, no, yeah. we got you this time around. We gonna ride yeah. with you, and so I, I think that's a you know, and I try to be humble enough to say like, yeah, I, I probably you know could have phrased some things differently, and I think that other people are like, yeah, we don't have time to be messing around. Like we yeah. got a mad or white supremacist in the White House that's trying to convince people to you know down bleach like it's vodka, and that's you know. Mm-hmm basically there's like no big deal people are dying every day and that's just what it is it's no time to hold people to a standard that this man couldn't even halfway meet on his best day yeah narrator please is not vodka i know no one on this spot this uh uh, live stream would think that, but yes, absolutely. Maya, uh, let me ask you that question because ask you this question because running for office does expose um, you to just all the negativity possible. You add to that social media and the environment that we live in now where people do feel like they have the opportunity and the right to just come right after anyone. And you think about, you know, I think about prosecutors the same way I think about lobbyists. For, you know, my best friend is a lobbyist in Florida. Mm-hmm. And being a lobbyist is one of the small number of fields in which a black woman can rise to the height of a firm, a law type firm, and be financially successful and actually write legislation, right? It's one of those jobs that is great for black women and it's a great opportunity space. Similarly, prosecutors, a lot of black women acquire power by becoming prosecutors, by becoming district's attorney, uh, you know, by becoming members of Congress. Like these are the paths to power and prosecutor is one of them. And so I wonder how, if, if that changes sort of the way that people should start thinking about Kamala Harris, because by the way, working on MSNBC, I can tell you some of our most popular people that are on every day are prosecutors and everyone loves them because they say, go get Trump, get him. Yeah. And they love all of these people. We call some of them the sisters-in-law and they love Maya and they love all of these people, the other Maya. Um, You know, they're like, we love all these prosecutors because they see them as a vehicle to end Trumpism. So I wonder, you know, if that should also shape the way we're thinking about this former prosecutor. No, absolutely. Um, I should say that uh, you're forged through the fact that I should say that especially she ran statewide Yes. Uh, and and just went through all kinds of hurdles and obstacles. Uh, but, you know, being having that prosecutorial training, I mean, she knows how to ask the critical questions. She knows how to get into the mindset of the criminal. <laughs> she knows how to actually prosecute a case. Uh, and I think that she is ready more so probably than anybody else that was in the presidential campaign uh, to take that case to Donald J. Trump uh, and his entire administration to prosecute the, the fact that they have, you know, basically, uh, you know, just been malfeasant in terms of their administration. Uh, they have been complicit in the deaths of more than 150,000 Americans. Uh, and they have, you know, frankly, been involved in international, uh, you know, scandals that we have, I think, yet to see the full scope of. So I think I want, what I would, I would like to do is point out Uh, that we have to be resistant to efforts uh, from the Russians or anybody else uh, to try to divide and conquer our communities uh, by putting, you know, trolls out there uh, with, you know, um, negative memes or uh, exploiting divisions that they perceive like this Eidos versus the diaspora question. Yeah. Uh, They're going to be using these kinds of uh, ways to tactically divide us and we have to be savvy enough to resist them up front. Yeah, and Mark, that was what you were talking about, right? I mean, you do have this sort of absurd argument, you know, that there's a there's a hierarchy to to Africanness or to blackness that actually puts Africa at the bottom and yeah. puts 
American, uh, that being enslaved in America at the top, and that that is a way that you should divide for some reason for a lot of people, black folks, when that would leave out Marcus Garvey. And it would, it would mean that we were not, you know, Stokely Carmichael and all sorts of people who just considered themselves black as, as we all do because we're in the diaspora together. Well, and I think we have to be clear that, you know, historically, there have been different moments of tension within the diaspora, but not too much lately. It was not until Kamala Harris announced that she was running for president that you saw that argument played out on social media en masse. You never seen that before. And so now all of a sudden, this argument that those of us who come from this country are somehow better or more elite. Look, the only difference between us and say your ancestors, Joy, is in my ancestors and our ancestors, those of us who were born here, got off the boat a little bit later. Right. You know, if my ancestors has gotten off the boat early, I'd be Jamaican or Haitian or, or something like that. So it's really an, an, an absurd argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And Melanie, let's. I want to Melanie and then Latasha. Let's talk about. You know, we just lost, of course, also John Lewis. Um, and you know, so there are a lot of people who were very emotional about this year. CT Vivian as well, and obviously, um, um, you know, um, Elijah Cummings as well. And we've seen these. You know, what we're seeing is this great generation of uh, what were the Black Lives Matter activists of the 1960s passing along passing you know, into into their reward. And so I wonder if there's a special significance to this choice in light of in light of that for you, Melanie, and then Latasha. Um, yes, and I will add uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry. Yes. Who I'm passed so in much. March. In March. Yes. So many of the sisters and, 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 and brothers who crossed yes. that bridge. Um, I believe it, it, uh, in movements this is called a zeitgeist moment you know we have these movements and the and the convergence of it all um i think it's it's it's, it's no accident i think it's in divine order that's my spiritual belief that this is this is, is god-centered that, that, that there's a shift taking place and part of that birth of a new a new united states of america that has never dealt with the realities of the quote unfinished business of slavery and all that it meant and what i think latasha i heard you say this to somebody I, I'm, when you i'm gonna give it i'm gonna quote it to you but they talked about i think it was you you just went on and it just and it stuck with me we talked about the what 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 did we do as black women in this country we took care of everybody's babies they had to go home and take care of ours we breastfed other people's babies and so now we go from that to so many other things, levels that we hit to this moment and what it means. It doesn't end racism and sexism, but it takes it a whole nother level if we're able to take this across the finish line and it will forever change this country. And Black Lives Matter, the depth of, 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 of so, some of the greats and some of the weight names that we, we don't call tonight, all of it, even yeah. somehow COVID-19, that exposed what it exposed, right? That, and then, and, and Joe, I watch you every night. I just, and I'm gonna pause and say, I love it. I just love seeing you every night. And you, when, and I've not in my lifetime seen polls that stood as long as they had, that black yeah. and white yeah. people thought the same thing. Yeah. Come on now. So God is in this, um, giving us this moment, and we're gonna take it and, 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 and shift, shift this country into, and to do much better yeah. than it has done in 400 and plus years. And so we're here for such a time as this. It's our watch. And we got to take it the, take it across the finish line and then keep on pushing. And we can walk and chew gum and tanks. I can love you, Joe Biden, and challenge you. I can love you, Kamala Harris, and challenge you to push the agendas that we have to have done. But it feels good. Again, I'm going to say, it feels still yeah. good tonight to be in this awesome. moment. I feel the same way. I feel like we are in this moment um, you know, you always got to know what time it is. My grandfather was a farmer and he would talk about there's always there's a season to, to, to sow and then there's a season to reap and then there's harvest time. And so and, and, and oftentimes what we see in those difficult moments, 
right? Like right before we really, really need like those difficult moments, what can come out of it is a beautiful plan, a beautiful new beginning. And so in this moment of where in many ways, I like some of us feel like we living in hell right now, <laughs> like mm-hmm. under this administration that the, the, the racial tension, I know for me, I usually sleep well. All my life I've slept well. I cannot sleep a full night. Right, that's not that's a new occurrence for me. And then I thought it was just me on talking to other people. They feel in yeah. the same way. We feel yeah. in this level of anxiety. We're sitting there watching videotapes where a man literally got his knee down. You know, I'm from the south, got a, his knee down on the man, how they used to how they killed deer on um, from George Floyd. We're looking at and he felt and he knew he's being taken, right? We're looking at white supremacists, we're looking at a, a, a president that actually retweet. The, the, the images of people who are throwing up the white uh, white power sign and yeah. are actually saying that like I think I'm I'm saying that because I think we got to know what moment we're in that yeah. this ain't this isn't about um, uh, just Kamala this isn't about Biden this really is about us and that collectively we've got to get behind this ticket and see the opportunity of the possibilities I yeah. always have to say that pain creates can create special possibilities if you let it. And so in this moment that we're going through, if any time that I think that we don't have to convince people that American financial system is not where it's supposed to be, I ain't really got to do all that convincing right now. Right? <laughs> you know, a people would say this is the wealthiest country in the world. It couldn't even sustain folks for two months. Right. Yeah. I mean, it could have if the political will was there, but it didn't. What we're yeah. talking about even right now, we're in Georgia and the biggest pandemic. There's a hospital in South Georgia right where Albany that service Albany that at one point was a hot spot, right? That's getting ready to close in 30 days in the middle of a pandemic. My point is we have to really know what time it is and we've got to step up and say, no, like enough is enough. And so what we've got to do is we can't just show up to the polls. We got to vote, but at this point, it got, we got to have five folks. Like everybody, uh, you officially, if nobody told you I'm gonna do it right now, you are officially deputized. <laughs> you have been deputized that as we were talking about in what happened in Selma, because if you really recognize what happened in Selma and know the history of Selma, that they had been organizing in the 50s. Amelia Boynton, matter of fact, yeah. and a lot of that work was led by women. Yeah. We've been marginalized even in our own history, even in the civil rights movement. Hello? And that, that even in that space that she had been organizing in the 50s but it was protracted struggle and she continued and she continued and the community and then more people joined and more people joined. And then what you see, you start seeing the crowd get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I'm saying that in this moment, that those of us that are hearing this, it is, it, you're, you're being called right now. Like you got to vote, but we already going to believe that you're going to vote. You got to get, your vote has to be multiplied. You got to multiply that one vote to two votes, right? And really recognize that power. We don't stop there. We're going to actually demand that there's a shaping of an agenda in our community. Why is it that black women, we got the highest rates of going to college. We are the highest turnout voters, that we are the number one business owners. Then why in the heck are we at the bottom of the economic scale? Something yeah. that's like something that's flipped. But I do think the good news is that we got an opportunity because we coming. We got an opportunity to do this differently. We got to know we coming, y'all. We coming. And so we just need everybody to have all hands on deck. Absolutely. And Maya, talk about the the way you take the passion that you're hearing um, and all of everybody's commitment that you're hearing um, to take this ticket across the finish line. Then step two happens and trying to make a legislative agenda happen. That's a little bit more complicated, but it's also going to require people to vote down ticket to make sure there's an amenable legislature, uh, both at the state level and in the federal level. Talk a little bit about that one. So it's going to be imperative that the uh, the Biden-Harris ticket has a Democratic Congress. I mean, frankly, we've been now for too long. Uh, we need the House in the House. So of course, absolutely need to get the Senate. Uh, and so we've got black women uh, who are running all across this nation, the largest number of black women ever uh, who are running Congress, uh, in, in numbers that are very large. Uh, we've got to make sure that we are supporting you know, certainly progressive candidates uh, who get around policy agenda uh, that is focused squarely on equity. Uh, as we well know, we've got challenges in the healthcare space. We're in the middle of a pandemic uh, that is disproportionately hurting black, brown, and poor people. 
uh, disproportionately hurting frontline workers who are disproportionately black and brown and women. Uh, and so we have got to be about the uh, the business of, uh, you know, immediate access to health care. And that has to be front and center in a, in a, an agenda. Uh, we've got a challenge when it comes to, of course, our criminal justice system and police brutality. And so that means that we've got to carry forward with an agenda to get that under control. Uh, we've got double standards that are operating in the economic system, in our labor market, in our educational We've got to get all of these things under control because uh, what Latasha was saying uh, is that we have a problem with systemic racism and sexism in this country. It's reflected in our public policies, mm -hmm. and we've got to put script if we want to have any chance uh, from uh, basically getting on the escalator to prosperity. Yeah, absolutely. And Tiffany, uh, you know, it's 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 kind of shocking if you think about it. In what two hundred and almost two hundred and eighty years of this country's history, there have been fewer black senators than there are eggs in a in a carton of eggs, right? Um, yeah, there have only been ten, nine or ten. So now there's going to be one fewer um, at the end of this process. So there's the upside of having a, a first black woman vice president, but there'll be one less black senator. Um, well, well. Possibly. Okay, Jamie Harrison. Right. That's, yeah. true. That's true. That's very true. And but I'm um, just saying, in we're not in Georgia, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> but how important is that? Because that is something that I guess people should be thinking about if you're looking at the Warnock race or you're looking at Jamie Harrison's race. Um, there, I mean, S Mike X Espy is running in Mississippi. In uh, Mississippi, so there yeah. are all these potential black senators to as you said, replace that number. How important are these Senate races gonna be? And will, in your view, having a black woman on the ticket help these Senate races? Yeah, that is one thing that we had to think about. And that was a very strategic thought. Latasha and I talked about a lot when we penned our op-ed for the Post, is we have to think down ballot and how will the top of the ticket influence these down ballot races? And so you see today, Joy, all the enthusiasm, all the excitement. I mean, it was a movement today. Imagine mm -hmm. had he named some random person who wasn't excited. You would not see this. And we're going yeah. to take this enthusiasm to the polls. Mm -hmm. And so the people who will benefit from this are certainly Georgia, certainly mm -hmm. Arizona, where it's a close Senate race there and the demographics are rapidly changing. Mm -hmm. um, certainly South Carolina. So yeah, I definitely think having Senator Harris on the ticket is going to benefit a lot of the people, not only running for Senate, but the House as well. We have to remember the Senate and the House are both up for grabs. Yeah. So you don't want to flip one and then lose the other. Like you, if you have control across, and that's been the only the only balance in government is that we had a democratic controlled house. Imagine if the Republicans controlled the House, the Senate, the White House, and the courts. That is the scenario that we're looking at in 2020 from a group of people, a political party, who are actively cheating, who are actively suppressing our votes and attempting to oppress our lives. We have to be very vigilant about um, the down ballot races. And people need to make sure that they um, have those mail-in ballots um, collected, filled out. Um, there's a primary August 18th. Who had a primary August 18th? Somebody had a primary. Georgia. Oh, Florida. Oh, yeah. Georgia. Florida. Oh, Florida too. Georgia right. and Florida. That's right. Yeah. Georgia and Florida. Yeah. Have uh, primaries August 18th. Yeah. So this is huge. This is huge. And some of these mail-in ballots have already been filled out. A lot of people have done early voting. So yeah, Julie, this is a, a major issue that we need to consider. Absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 it's a huge race. And, and people tend to, you know, I remember during the um, Barack Obama campaign in 2008 when I was on staff and seeing people line up around the block that was wrapped around the buildings in South Florida where people could vote. And we were like, wow, we're going to be here all day. But then the line started moving like this. The line was moving so fast. And we yeah. knew there was like, thick ballot full of all these ballot questions. There were all these down ticket races and people were coming out and going, oh my God, and walking away. And we started to realize <laughs> yeah. um, after a while that, oh my God, these people are only voting for Obama. They're skipping yeah. the ballot and they're just voting for him. And you know, then we went to 2010 and people were like, we got Obama. And then they didn't yeah. vote. And black people lost the single greatest loss of black power um, 
in modern history, if not in all of history, was the 2010 election in which we seeded almost the entire South in terms of Southern legislatures. Um, we seeded seats at every level in the states and federally because people decided they'd they'd gotten Obama and there was no more work to do. So uh, I am I am about to exit this panel, unfortunately, as much as I love this panel, but the wonderful Angela Rye, our convener for the evening. You have to have a convener. This is like Angela. Our convener is this Angela Rye. Hey sister. And she's going to, she's going to take in for, up for me. She just came off CNN. I now have to go on MSNBC. So we're doing the handoff. We're doing the, the network handoff. <laughs> I'm telling you, we all gonna be the color purple kids. We gonna be the color purple sisters. Listen here, listen here. We out here with a black woman on my ticket, okay? Listen, let me tell you, don't make me come on with a with a turban tomorrow. I might come and wrap my head. I might. I have some cute head wraps tomorrow. Don't <laughs> that I got braids. I'm yeah. right now. Yes, I'm gonna have to think. Wait, about Joy, go kill turban. it. We know you will, Tiffany. I know that you've been on here holding it down for a long time and you like, how did I even get this? I summarily dismissed you too. Uh, you know, like who else gotta go? Whoever else needs to go ahead. I have uh, Congresswoman Fudge will be joining me um, in just a moment. So um, I'm gonna talk to you all for a little bit, but this is gonna be my question for the night. So let me ask all of you that, oh, Latasha loved me too. Latasha said, hi, so I gotta talk to you later too. Okay. Hi, Tasha, I got you. So let me ask the three of you, my dear sister, Maya, Melanie, and yes. Thompson, where were you today when you got the news <laughs> and what did you do? Like, I just, that's gonna be my question tonight, my lead question with everybody. Um, I was uh, here at home. Um, I was, I just walked away from the television, right? We're getting all these, you know, you know, Insider is about to happen, about to, ha about to happen. And just in that moment, I stopped thinking about it. And Dr. Barbara Williams Skinner called me, my, my spiritual sister leader. And she's, uh, she, she, she'll be okay. I say, she, she, she's emotional on the phone. Hey, Congresswoman Fudge. Hey, how are you? Let me tell you something about Congresswoman Fudge. She's always early. This is her MO, I mean, for as long as I've known her. And so Ms. Fudge will bring you in, but I also, I have a solo moment with her. But Ms. Fudge, the question that I just asked them, and I'll invite you to answer it at the end. And when Ms. Fudge answers, I will invite you all to continue on with your evenings without us. Mm -hmm. But I wanna, I wanna ask this, where were you when you got the news and what did you do? So that's the question, Ms. Fudge. Um, Melanie, you can go okay, ahead. And I'll, and I'll finish. And so Barbara Call, she's emotional. Then I get emotional. And, you know, I'm walking outside in my backyard and then I just started crying. I just started crying. And then then I got excited and went through all these emotions as I had shared earlier. And the first person I thought about was my mom who, who passed away, three, you know, three years ago. It was the first thing that came to my mind, my grandma and so many others that had gone on. And then I said, like I shared earlier with Joy was, then I thought about the political realities that we got work to do. We got work to do. And, and I know they're gonna come after Black women and, and all of us, brothers, and you know, to manipulate brothers in a different kind of way than they did, you know, all these things. And so we've got a lot of work to do, but it, it does feel good to be in a moment that we're able to celebrate and be, and I felt like I was seen fully for the first time in my life. Yeah, yeah, feeling seen. How about you, Mark? Where were you, what did you do? Well, I just before the announcement was made, about 30 minutes before, I was on the phone with a member of Kamala's staff trying to get something out of her. Uh, but <laughs> you know, our staff is, they were like, Mark, we don't know. Nobody knows. We <laughs> just all tripping. Even called a couple of friends at the DNC that we all mutually know. They didn't know either. And I was on the phone. Again, we got to do some work with these brothers. I was on the phone with a brother who was mad at me for the letter the brother sent Monday because he had been propagandized by some trolls online. And he was getting mad at me for sending a letter. And as he was talking to me, my producer, Brittany, sent me a text. It was one word, all caps. It just said Kamala. So I said, dude, I got to get on the phone with you. So I went to, turn on the TV, went to Twitter and the announcement. And then right after that happened, that same brother 
that was arguing with me and mad that we sent that letter text me back and said, I apologize, you all were right and I was wrong. So we still have a lot of work to do because our brothers are gonna be targeted, but brothers, we've got to support this black woman. People would not scrutinize a black pros male prosecutor or a white male prosecutor the way they prosecute uh, our sister. And, and I just hope and pray um, um, that people, you know, will do that and get and get behind her. And Angela, if you would, I don't know how much time I got left, but I got to do this. Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Our sister, the uh, queen, the president of Queensboro, Sharon Lee, who is Asian, uh, just sent me a text which reads, um, as, as Asian American Pacific Islanders, as children of immigrants, as second generation Asian Americans, She's relatable to such a tremendous breadth of 21st century America. She elevates, validates, and affirms unique concerns of even Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. This is tremendous mm -hmm. for all of us as well. So she touches across the whole spectrum of people and people of color. I love it. I love it. I got to go to my big sis, uh, one of the gurus. I don't think people understand. Uh, Maya isn't just, um, you know, a, a former uh, um, candidate for office. She is a political genius, a policy wonk extraordinaire. But I know she's got all the feels today, too. So I want to hear from you, Maya, about where you were and how did you react when you heard the news? Oh, you're on mute, sis. Uh, sitting on the back porch, uh, actually uh, carrying out my assignment for Win with Black Women. Uh, we were told at 3.30 to release our memes on social media. Uh, so I had just released my first set of memes, uh, and I was also keeping uh, an ear on the, uh, the television. Uh, and uh, when I saw the readout, uh, they sent a tweet saying that it was Kamala. Uh, and so immediately I went to my new meme <laughs> that was given to us to uh, send out uh, with regards to when it was, when the announcement was made. Uh, and then I posted that on all my social, social media platforms. Uh, and then immediately started engaging uh, people who were actually reacting to the news. I, I was excited. Uh, I thought that it was a smart pick on Biden's behalf. Uh, I was relieved uh, because I was concerned that he might go another way. Uh, and certainly, um, I do think that he has put himself in the best position mm -hmm. uh, to have an energized ticket and an energized election going into this fall election. Uh, so with that, I'm just, uh, you know, very pleased with this election. And I want to thank you uh, and certainly the Congresswoman and all of the leaders on this, uh, this telethon uh, for all of the hard work that you put into getting us to this point as well. I love it. Thank you so much, Mark, Melanie, and Maya, the three M's bringing it home. I appreciate right. you all so much um, for joining tonight. Take care. Congresswoman Fudge! <laughs> oh my God. God. Okay, so tell me. Huh? Oh, for you. Say it one more time. Your volume is only, down kind of low. For you, only for you am I up this time of night. Oh, well, I am so grateful you did. I want to make sure we get your volume all the way right because people need I to hear this powerful down. voice. Is that better? Uh, I turned it up. Is it better? It's, yeah, that's a little better. And it may just be where the speaker is positioned. But I have to hear from you when you heard the news today. After all of your hard work, even through the primary, Miss Fudge, what did you do? And like, where were you and what did you do? How did you respond? I was actually glued to the television because I was waiting. I, you know, I had heard that it may be around four o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting there uh, waiting. And I kept thinking it's 410, it's 415. <laughs> when is this going to happen? And um, when I heard it, you know, I, I, I actually was almost, even though I wasn't surprised, yeah. I just kind of got chills. It was like, I expected it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was afraid that once again we would get looked over. Yes. And so I was I was afraid to be hopeful. I was afraid to mm. really but then I thought about it and I and I thought to myself, what a great day for America. Mm -hmm. That that we finally took a giant step towards fulfilling the promise of this country. Yes. Recognizing people who look like me. 
And I, I have chills now just to think about yes. the fact that we've been seen and we're heard. And, and I felt vindicated. Yeah. I felt vindicated. Oh my gosh. So first I need to say, so when we started your segment, um, we still have some other guests in. So I really want to give you your just due for everything you do. Um, for those of you who do not know, I don't know how you don't know Congresswoman Marsha Fudge, former chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. She represents the 11th district in Ohio. Um, she is, I'm going to tell a personal one. She is the person who I talked to when I thought red wine still tasted like dishwater. And now, and now we have evolved, Congresswoman. I have evolved, and I cannot wait to share a bottle of wine with you, especially with this. Like she's laughing because I really was like, "This fudge just tastes like dishwater." She was like, "Your taste buds will change," <laughs> and you did not lie. So once again, Congresswoman Fudge, who endorsed Kamala Harris in the primary, um, so dope. Considered yourself as a vice presidential contender, um, so dope that while they're sleeping. Right on um, on House uh, on for the House Administration uh, Committee, you are the subcommittee chair on elections. So while we're all exuberant and excited today, you're still working to make sure we just have fair and safe elections in the fall. That's so right. I want to just I just want to talk to you about some of those things that are in your bio. There, by the way, also a former mayor, also a former staffer, also like everything. So and somebody who I call when I'm, I either am in trouble or I need to make sure I get some right. And just had to this weekend, right? Like, just like all around, love her ride or die, Scorpio sister. Um, and former president of Delta Sigma Theta. So all of these things are things I want to ask you about. Okay. All right. All right. So let's start the, with the last part. So she's not your sorority sister, but you put away the colors and the signs to endorse her in the primary. What do you think that whether you're a Delta, an AKA, a Link, not in any organized organization at all. What do black women have to do to secure the victory this fall? Well, let me first say that I took off my Delta t-shirt. I had it on before I came on. So I put on. <laughs> you could have worn it. It would have been a solidarity thing. Uh, so, but, but, but I think that um, one of the thing I always say is that we're all sisters. We were all black before we were affiliated with any of these organizations. We all fight for the same things. We all believe in the same things. And we believe that if there is a group of people who have been extraordinarily blessed, it is people like us. And so we have an obligation more than many, more than most to do our part. So I think you're going to see a strong, strong turnout and support from members of the Divine Nine. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm looking yeah. forward to part of it. I really am. That is so incredible. The other thing I thought about is you were elected in 2008. So you're you're on the ticket with all this energy around Barack Obama. So, you know, even going back to his nomination, how similar do you think this will be for us? Knowing she's not the top of the ticket, but it's such an important role. I've been saying, you know, for the last several months, I can't think of, a, of an election where a VP pick was going to be more consequential. How do you think some of these, um, this, well, at least Barack Obama and Kamala Harris, how are they parallel to you? Well, I mean, I think that there are some similarities, but not really a lot. Mm. Um, I think that when you look at the fact that we have always elevated men, be they black, brown, yeah. whatever, yeah. we've never elevated women the same mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So for a person who is so uniquely qualified to do what she is about to do, and someone who makes us so very, very proud. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear up now. Me too. A difference. <laughs> there is a difference in he, in my heart. There's a difference, um, and I think that it says to this nation, finally, you just keep saying, finally, it's us. Yeah. Finally, it's our turn. It's our time. And so that's different for me. I mean, I felt very, very yeah. strongly about Barack Obama. There's no question about it. He was a cause for black people and for young people and for people who want to change. This is different. Mm -hmm. I don't know what makes it feel different, but it just feels different. To me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was screaming earlier. I was like, I think my neighbors are probably going to think I have a DV situation because I was <laughs> like my throat. I had to go on CNN, Miss Fudge. My throat was like on fire. So I was like, OK. <laughs> But um, 
The other thing I want to ask you about, and I don't want to take away from the cele celebration of this moment and how you know grounding and fulfilling it is. Like you, you had the best word. It is vindicating, but we have a really serious borderline crisis on our hands with elections and the state of the elections going into November. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of your goals with um, the election subcommittee um, on House administration and what are some things you're like, this needs to happen, not now, but right now? Well, you know, the committee really came as an outgrowth of the Shelby decision. Yeah. When the Supreme Court said to us, well, we're not saying there's no racism. We're not really saying that. But what we're saying to you is that you have to prove it to us. You're going by things that happened 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and maybe there still needs to be some restrictions, but you can't prove it to us now. So get us some data to show us that it's happening now. And so, of course, we prove what all of us know. The more things change, the more they stay the same. There is more discrimination. There are more unjust laws. There are more voter suppression tactics than there were in 1965. Yes. Today. Today. And so what we did was we pulled together the data so that we could show uh, not only the Supreme Court, but members of Congress, it is time to change the formula. Mm -hmm. But of course, because they know the only way they can win is to keep our numbers down, they have not uh, been able, we've not been able to pass a new formula. But I will say this, we have put some money into um, the election out of the, out of the CARES Act mm -hmm. and some others. And so... It is, um, it's gonna be a challenge, but we are going to beat them because we have decided no matter what it takes, mm -hmm. if I have to just stand on the street corner and tell everybody, this is how you do it. This is how you work around the rules. We are going to win this election, especially mm -hmm. now. I never did believe that the ticket would be strong enough to win without a black woman on that ticket. And now that, now that he has done what I thought should have been done all along, I don't believe there's any way we can lose, Angela. Hmm. We are going. We are going to do whatever it takes. I mean, it's not even about them stop. We cannot be stopped. Woo! Say it for the people in the back, Miss Fudge. No, we cannot be stopped. Yeah, we just can't. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Um, I've never found myself on the other side of you in a battle, and I ain't about to now. <laughs> <laughs> ain't about to now. I'm going to be fighting right with you, ride or die. I texted Cedric today and I said, you got me, ride or die. Let's go. So um, I just, I want to, yeah, we are, we truly are all in it together. And I just, um, I really want people to understand that, yes, we should celebrate. We should be grateful. We should wear our shirts and our hats and Kamala and all that on there. But we also have to make sure we're super clear about what is at stake at the polls, really the mailbox now. Um, and everything that's going on. Are you all also responsible for pushing back on what Trump is doing with the Postmaster General? Yeah, we have we have actually a couple of bills that are included right now in the HEROES Act. I'm hoping that we'll at least pull it out to at least get the resources. Yes. But the one thing that Trump has underestimated is that secretaries of state, even those who believe the way he believes, they still don't want to look bad in their state. Mm -hmm. They still want to be able to say to the people who elected them, I may be a Trump supporter, but I also believe in free, open, fair elections. So I am going to do what it takes to make this happen. Now, there are going to be some, but they will be defeated, too. Mm -hmm. This is an army, Angela. We are yes. an army. Right? Yes. But there is nothing they can do to defeat us. Nothing. Woo. OK, so um, I believe that because, um, like I said, I've seen you work. Um, and so I guess the one thing I would say too, is when you think about the folks who are at home and normally Miss Fudge, this is a long standing issue for the CBC. It's like, we know that folks um, who are running for office normally come to us in the 11th hour. So we don't need to wait for anyone. We didn't wait for anyone to tell, tell folks what we wanted, what we required for this election, um, to win. What are you telling people? Okay. Today celebrate tomorrow. What do they do? Tomorrow, I want you to find out how you vote in your election in your state, in mm -hmm. your county. I'm going to start actually doing radio on my own dime. It gets that important it. to say, okay, get your application now. Don't wait until early vote starts. There's nothing that stops you from getting it now. Get it now. Mm -hmm. Take your time. If you need help, we'll help you. Get it in so that come October 3rd or 6th, it is in Ohio, uh, when you receive your ballot, 
I want you to fill it out and I want you to send it back immediately. We have yes. people in place in every neighborhood, in every church, in every center to say, if you have any questions, we are here to help you. Because the one thing we want people to understand is that there, even though people like us, I, I like the voting person, like most black people do. Yes. We don't trust the postal service. It's just a reality. We don't trust government. It's a reality. And it's yeah. justified. It's justified. Yeah. But but what we want to say to them is that if you're voting from home and you do it early, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make sure that you are. We're mm -hmm. going to track your ballot. We're going to do everything that's necessary to make sure your vote counts. Because what we need is for every single vote to count. Yes. So we're going to get started early. Today, as a matter of fact, for, as far as I'm concerned, tomorrow is election day. Yes. Yes. And we're going to start voting tomorrow. You know, the, the thing is, there was a meme that was online that said um, election day for you is not November 3rd, it's October 20th, because <laughs> that's when you need to get your ballot and that's when you need to send it yeah. back. And I'll tell you, that's got to be the truth. I ordered a package from the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast now. Um, July 15th. Ask me if I have my package. You don't have it yet. No, Miss Fudge. Wow. So I'm saying it might even need to, we might need to move it up from October 20th. You know, like, what are we going to, we need to have a united coordinated message. And I don't want people to be afraid and to not celebrate. But if I've learned anything from you all, from my CBC family, is it, we are better if we are prepared. And I would just rather us know exactly what we're dealing with. So there's no shenanigans. He needs to get blown out of the water beat. So. Well, one of the things we've shamed some of them enough to make them do right. Some of them will never do right. But the yeah. one thing that we have to do is make sure that we know the rules. We know how to make it happen. Yeah. And there are people in every state, whether they be lawyers or uh, people, students, who are going to be watching this process. Mm -hmm. They will not steal this election from us. Yeah. Well, here's the last thing that I want to leave people. So I don't know if you all saw at the top, but Miss Fudge was on here early. I have never in my life seen Congresswoman Marsha Fudge late for me. <laughs> like, I, and when I'm telling you early, I'm talking about early. So here's what we know. My new thing for this election, Miss Fudge, is going to be like, be like Marsha Fudge. Be <laughs> early. Like, that's the thing. So I love that. I feel like that's the meme. I'm going to see if I can get some run on that. I might be able to get some members to be like, she's always early. She's early. She's early. And then I'm going to say, be like Marsha Fudge. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to do something really quick. We have uh, the color girls who are people who you love. They're joining us. So I just want you to say hi to them before you okay, head out. Just so you can have a jubilant moment. Besides, Leah Daughtry is an AKA. So I want them to see the unity since yeah. you took the shirt, your Delta shirt off, and you put your own. Is that orange? You've it's got orange. your orange. It's orange. I took my red shirt off. I took it off. Yes. So I don't know where. I don't know where. Um, hi, Leah. Angela. How are you? Hi. Oh, there she is. She's coming. Thank there she is. So I, I can't. I can't is. hear you. <laughs> oh. That is amazing. Okay, so you guys see, there's there's Delta AK Uni here. There's no. Uh, I, I can't hear you, Young Yolanda. We can hear you though. <laughs> can somebody tell Yolanda we can hear? But no. So Delta's and 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 AK is united with Leah and So now we can go forward. <laughs> Somebody tell you lying she's on camera. I want to can I just say this as I leave you all because you know it's way past my bedtime. Let me just yes. say this. On this call right now, including you, are some of the most important black women in America. And mm -hmm. I'm just so proud to know you all. Proud of that. We love you. Oh, Thank you so love much. You. Yolanda said love she you. loves you too. She can't hear you yet. She can you hear, hear me? Yes. yes. I cannot hear Angela. I can hear yes. Mignon and I can hear Leah. Angela, what? you went like mute like halfway through your the interview with the congresswoman. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you, Angela. That's so odd. You okay. know what I cannot hear. Okay, maybe take the earbuds out. I have headphones. Take them out. How about now? Right. Can y'all see me? Can I? Uh, uh, I, I hear that. My light on. I was on with uh, Vizant. So, y'all know um, y'all on camera, hey, right? Wait, yes, I just want to do, you know, it's but I still can't hear. I don't know it's, why I can't hear Angela. Holly, can, is there any way that we can work on um, Yolanda's audio? We're streaming live. It's live. Put the headphones recording. out. I, I know. I want to make sure. Can we please? <laughs> 
we are recording. Um, so I want to make sure that we resolve. They resolve. Okay. Hi. I got Hi. three fourths of the color girls. Three fourths of the color girls. But okay. This is the question we're starting with. First of all, I'm so humbled to have been with you all in this fight. Like dream come true for a little black girl who loves politics. So I have to hear from you all. Where were you when you heard the news today? Mignon and Leah and Donna. And what did you do? That's the question for everybody, just so we can kick it off in the excitement and the tears. I got my tissue ready if I need it. It's right here. I'm ready. I'm going to start with you, Mignon. Where were you and what did you do? I was actually actually sitting where I am now and I got a call and it was they said it was not official yet so please hold it tight and I said okay and I just you know I think I just stopped for a second and I just saw this um I saw a panoply of black women that just kind of it I just kept seeing Dr. Hyde and Dr. Angelo and Dr. Shabazz and you know, Shirley Chisholm, and then I saw my nieces, and then I saw all the little brown and black girls who probably for the first time will see themselves in a way that they've never seen themselves. And so it, it took me a moment. It's still, I, I don't think, you know, and it's, I said this to a reporter today, you know, it's something to be the backbone of America to be hidden mm. and to come out from the shadows. And so that's kind of, that's where I was. I love it. I love it. Donna, where were you and what did you do? Well, um, I, I've had in my spirit for the last couple of days that this might be happening. And I wanted to first I told me, you know, I got to get my hair done because I wanted to look good when I had to go on TV. Um, I took a shower. Mian called me, uh, Leah texted me, <laughs> and I was trying to balance all of that. And then I'm like, no, it's like 1.30. Everybody kept saying imminent. And they're like, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? And we, you know, we're very close. So we're all texting each other, Yolanda. And we got another color girl, Tina. We're all trying to figure out because we're very close. Mm -hmm. But at that point, precise moment. I was in the car. Um, I knew that it was about to go public. And I was actually driving past Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, so called winter house, because I live in uh, Northwest DC. And I had to say to Abraham Lincoln, thank you. But then I had to tell the color girls on the phone, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do not run the red light. Do not speed. Do not go crazy. And do you know, when I normally go on TV, I arrive like 10 minutes before because I'm like, whatever. I was an hour early. <laughs> I, told him, I said, I'm going to be ready for Fox one hour early. Oh my gosh. It was, I, I've been, I, I, Mignon knows this, Leah and Yolanda. I did call my older sister, Cheryl, cause I know she keeps our secrets. She's a color girl too. I wanted her to call my aunt Marva. 84. I wanted her to call my mom a sister. I wanted her to call everyone who has ever been connected to me and supported me in all these years in politics. And I want them to know that the little girl that they helped to raise and they bought those crushed velvet dresses, the child they used to try to make look good with the nappy hair. I wanted them to know that it happened. And I told them they had to keep a secret, like, who are they going to call, right? <laughs> um, my Uncle Johnny called later. He said, well, how did Aunt Martha know? And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Black girl magic. <laughs> 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 but I have to tell you one more call, Angela, because I did call you. 
and I had to thank you. I also call the president, the former president of Howard University Student Government Association. Mm -hmm. Because when I went to that campus during that year protest, I told those students that they had something to look forward to, that they had power. And this young man cried. And I realized that Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, all of those women out of B. Wells, all of those women who have come before us, they wanted us to be part of this moment. So it's been, it's been an amazing moment. I hope I will never forget this as long as I live. And I want to thank my color girls for always keeping me in the loop and making me go get dressed up and <laughs> comb my hair and put on lipstick. <laughs> Well, I'll go next. Um, you know, I got in a call earlier in the day, and but I was afraid to be excited because it wasn't public yet. So I was just on pins and needles saying, okay, I will this call is about as confirmatory as I'm gonna get, but I can't be I'm afraid to be excited. Um, and then I talked to Mignon, I talked to Donna, talked to Tina, it's like, okay. And we were all like, okay, 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 okay. And then when it scrolled across, I was watching MSNBC. <laughs> and Brian Williams interrupted to say, we have a nominee mm -hmm. and it's Kamala Harris. And I just screamed. I'm in my home, I'm physical distancing like everybody else. I just screamed and then I just cried. Mm -hmm. I just cried and I was so overwhelmed in the moment. <laughs> and I called Mignon and then we were on the phone crying together. <laughs> and then Tina called me. And <laughs> if you know Tina, Tina don't get emotional, but Tina was crying and we were crying. <laughs> And it was just, Angela, I, I, I was thinking about, I recently, we've been doing our gene genealogy in my family and we recently found my great, great grandmother who was born in 1790 in Georgia, the year yeah. after the Continental Convention, mm -hmm. after the nation had been formed and she was born as a slave. All the way up to now, I have a niece who turned three a week ago oh, wow. and we had the family zoom for her birthday and we were all giving her birthday wishes. And I said to her, Lauren Joy, I'm working day and night. <laughs> and you are vice president. Amen. So that when you look at television, mm -hmm. you will see someone that looks like you. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was about all the women that Donna and Mignana that we've all been naming, but it's also about my great-great-grandmother, Eliza, and mm. all of our great-great-grandmothers whose names we don't know, who never made it to the history books, but they kept on living, and they kept on fighting, and they kept on breathing, and they kept on pushing, because I know they believed that one day this would happen. And for us who have spent our careers in the Democratic Party, <laughs> when it was only us in the Democratic Party, mm. pushing and pulling and making room for other people and swinging the door open wider and put and always uphill, it, I can't, be, I still can't believe it. Mm. And I am so happy i told the girls i when, when the call came i would I, I had on i don't know what i had on but i knew i had to put the clothes on because i already had people who had called and said you got to come on the show so i just walked from room to room trying to figure out where the clothes were and what i was gonna wear and i thought i would wear some pink and green and i was like i can't i got all of this pink and green i don't know which thing is the pink. i was so confused because all i could think was thank you lord yes. yes thank you lord for allowing us to be in this time to witness this history and not just witness it but be part of it mm -hmm. and i'm yeah. so grateful Amen. and so thankful and every time i think i'm gonna stop crying i start right. crying again. crying again girl i love it yolanda i i hope now you i can hear you 
Praise the Lord. I was like, our communications phone. expert can't hear me. I got off the phone. I was on my phone. I got off the phone and got on my iPad. So now I can Perfect. Well, you sound wonderful. And I just want to know where you were and what you did. <laughs> well, first, first of all, don't ever make me come after Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So what, what Leah said is then I'll tell you where I was. So I had been talking about this like to somebody, like three people earlier, and people kept asking me, well, who do you think it is? Do you really know who it is? And I said, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows but Joe Biden. I said, I really don't know anybody. And then I started to say, okay, it's me, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, you all right. I was in my home office on my computer putting together some lists or something. And I started seeing you know how you, you're on your, your, your computer or your whatever you're on, and you start seeing messages come in at the top. And all I saw was Kamala. Kamala with exclamation points. Kamala. Mm -hmm. I said, what the heck? And I had the TV on in the other room, but I couldn't really hear it. So I got in the other room and I ran it and I saw it. And I just, I just threw everything up in the air. I just screamed. <laughs> I love I just, it. Oh my God. It's just, it's a, oh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so funny because a friend of mine said the same thing I did. I said, this is the best I've felt in four months. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it is. is the most but, 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 but Angela, you know, earlier today, I went back and I'm sure my sisters have notes. Brianna Taylor was and murdered on March 13th. Joe Biden made this statement on March, I believe, March 15th. Within a week, there were conversations among a group of Black women, Melanie Campbell, Glenda Carr, um, Cleola Brown, Latasha Brown, Cleola, yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. That's right. This, this, you know, and I'll never forget <laughs> that night when the first letter was drafted. And for the first time I said, wow, I've actually been in the room when they selected a vice president. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. And the next morning I wrote back, I'm in. This was before George Floyd. Mm -hmm. I came and said their names because we're still praying. Mm -hmm. We knew we talked to the vice president. We talked to the vice president selection committee. We knew before the selection committee was announced who was on it because he was very open to our recommendations and our concerns. So I want to say to Vice President Biden and to all of the people who sat in the room to make this decision, because Mignon and I, Leah, Yolanda, we've all been in rooms. I want to say thank you. I know some of our calls were a little bit uncomfortable, maybe not, but I thought we were authentic. We shared. We talked about why this made sense, mm -hmm. why a Black woman would help him enlarge the map, why a Black woman could help him lead the country, why Black women were qualified. We talked about the fact that we've had 48 vice presidents, all of whom were white males with different experiences, and why the black women under consideration would also be superbly qualified. So I wanna to say to team Biden and to the vice president personally, thank you for creating a process that allow our input, our recommendations, our strategic advice to be part of the deliberations that matter. And you know, know about that. Before you go, Angela, I think we, it's also important to note that we started with a list of 14 black women. Thank you. And one of the things that we know happened in this process, at least six of these women were looked at very seriously. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which yep. is really remarkable. And all of the women on the list were immensely qualified and experienced. So it was almost a joy to be pushing for women behind the scenes. I mean, even Susan Rice, she never 
volunteered for this position. We asked her to get in this position. That's true. And most of the, out of all the women on there, Susan was recruited. But the fact is all of them, Karen Bass, all of them, Val Demings, you know, all of the ones that represented us. I mean, mad shout out to them, mad yeah. shout out, because I would have been happy to see any of them succeed in this process. But it was just a joy to see all these black women just in this process. Yeah, I love that. I just wanted to say, if I, if I may, Angela, yeah. one last shout out to Auntie Maxine. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hey. Because I'm going to tell you, and we haven't so when when Vice President Biden made his commitment mm -hmm. that he wanted to pick a woman, the next day, Auntie Maxine was on my phone. Mm -hmm. Leah, yeah. what are we going to do about this? <laughs> and I said, um, Auntie, don't worry. We had we 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 got it. She said we have to do something. We have to do something. You've mm -hmm. got to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And I hung up and I called Mignon. And I said, okay, Maxine just called me and we have to do it. She told me. <laughs> wait, and then we got and then wait, do we got to find Mel because she's the letter writer. So we got to find. We're gonna have to call Melanie because she likes to write the letters. She likes she to write them letters. So and she got, got to call thing. Melanie. And we called in the troops, but it was at the impetus of Auntie Maxine That's calling us did. and saying, you must do something. We must do something. Yeah. We cannot let this moment pass. What, Talia, what are you going to do? <laughs> let me tell you. And it's good to know that um, I'm not the only one that she will still find in boss. Okay. So I <laughs> oh, no. I'm, oh, no. I'm so grateful for that. I do want to say this because I think it's so important for some of the younger people who are tuning into this live stream. You all have been called and have called yourselves the hidden figures in politics. Um, you all had a color girls protest inside a campaign. And because of that protest with Michael Dukakis after leaving Reverend Jackson's campaign, you have burst open doors, like cracked open, crashed through ceilings for so many of us. And that is why where I started it's been such an honor to work with you all here after admiring your work from afar and then closer up for years. I am so grateful for who you are. I want all these young people to know who you are. If y'all don't know them, look them yeah. up, get their book. They got a book that's award winning, um, The Colored Girls, and they are, you all. The Colored are, Girls Who Consider Politics. Consider politics. Paperback. Look, uh, I'm gonna tell you, Bruce did a forward. <laughs> What? It is yeah. a book. Wait, if you, you ever want to get us off, you better say. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Mignon, can we do a but, shout out to Lisa Rochester? Yes. To Marsha yes. Fox, yes. yes. To all of the other sisters, and finally, Angela, to all of the brothers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm recruited. Stick with us. Yeah. yeah. And let me, can I just say one it. thing to Sister Angela? Yes. She don't get enough credit. She doesn't get enough credit because everybody thinks she's feisty. But let me yeah, tell you, I love it. Feisty, she's aggressive. Is courage, oh, Angela, and she never <laughs> is in a position to not use courage. Mm -hmm. And that is the greatest gift God has given her is courage because she never gets comfortable in these seats. And we thank you, sister, because a lot of these younger sisters look up to you. And when she's out here, bamming her fist. People help her because sometimes she's the only one that has the courage. Mm -hmm. so we love you, sister. We, we love do. you. I love you all, but I'm not gonna let you lie to me today. Let me tell you all. <laughs> I want no, I'm serious. And it's not it's not that I'm not courageous, but I know y'all have my like let me be clear. I'm not standing out here by myself. For the other day on on uh well, I'm not gonna tell all the family business, but Sunday we were talking about why we should call a name. And I'll mm -hmm. just say, mm -hmm. Monday morning, let me tell you about God, Reverend Daughtry, Bishop. <laughs> you, you, you know how you say something and he'd be like, oh, that's how you feel? Okay, bam, test. Tune in. I get yeah. this question that's like, so who are you supporting? My heart starts beating, <laughs> right? And I said, oh, this is the test. I'm, I'm going to be called to do the same thing I demanded of everybody else. So I said, Kamala Harris is the, the, the person that I think is best suited for this role. And then I called Mignon. I said, let me tell you what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was thinking about, seriously, I want you all to know this. Mignon said, 
you know, we're not out there alone. We've done all this groundwork. And I thought about that in that moment. I'm like, no, boo, you're not by yourself. You all have done all the hard stuff. What I got to do is easy. Run my mouth and say stuff loud sometimes and push people. You all have done all the hard work. So thank you for making it easy. But well, wait a minute. I got to just say this. Angela called me right before she went on and said, you got anything? You got anything? I said, no, sister, I ain't got anything, but I knew I had something. But she went in so hard for Angela. Now she looking like this bright bulb. <laughs> she didn't know Angela had already been picked. Kamala, not more. Kamala. I mean, Kamala, I'm sorry. Yana, all light-skinned people don't look the same, okay? Oh, <laughs> stop that. Listen, that's a joy. I want to do this again. We need more time so people can hear you all's story, so they know who the real champions are. Behind the scenes, don't get a lot of credit. Today, we are giving them all the credit. We know that this live stream is going to go viral to my big sisters, mentors from afar and up close now, Mignon, Leah, Yolanda, and Donna. Thank you. I mean it. I love you all so much. We love you too. Thank you. you. And too. from love Zora, you. the K9 okay. Club with us, Zora, as in Zora <laughs> Neal Hurston, Howard University. H U. Did you know Zora? This is Zora. Yes, she did. did. Yes, she did. Okay, bye, Zora the dog. I love y'all. <laughs> <I will. laughs> bye, bye, everybody. Bye. I'll bring the guys in. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye. Love you. Love you too. Okay. Um. So we are going to go next to our panel with the guys. Um. And I don't know where they are just yet, but we are starting with Van Lathan. Wes Bellamy, and I don't know if Bakari is on. Um, oh, he said he doesn't have the link. Hold on, I need to get it. <laughs> How did who does who does that? Hold on, you guys. I gotta send him the link. One second, one second, one second. Um, who can send him the link to moderate this panel? How did I not send him the link? He wasn't on the email earlier. I don't know. I'm about to let you on right now. There, we're gonna send you the link. That was an accident. I'm sorry. Damn. Sorry, I'm cussing on the live stream. Hold on. Hi, you guys. What up? How are you? It literally said, oh, he said, that's the instruction. I see now. How are you doing? I'm talking to you guys. Well, I'm fantastic. It's a, it's a very exciting day, man. Well, I am um, super excited with you all. How about we just talk about for the moment, for just a moment, how these kings are out here repping for the queens. We had... um. A statement of solidarity that was issued yesterday from um, more than 100 black men. You all were two of them. Bakari um, Sellers will join us in just a moment. Um, and this letter goes hard in the paint. I mean, it went hard in the paint. It went It went after um, Joe Biden's record. It talked about what's wrong with ambition. Uh, we know something's wrong with blind ambition, but regular ambition is a wonderful thing. And um, I just, I just want to ask you all, how you feel today? Where were you when you heard the news? I was I was uh, doing some COVID testing oh. at one of our local public housing sites, and uh, people just some of the doctors were saying, "Hey, Wes, have you seen the news? Have you seen the news? Have you seen the news?" And I'm like, "Nah, not yet." And I was excited. It's a good day. I say, as a father of four beautiful black daughters, it's a good thing and it's a powerful thing for me to say to them that this is a lady that you can look up to. You already could look up to it before, but now she's about to make history and it just makes me feel good. And I'm glad that brothers were able to also take a take a step back and just use some of our power and influence to support our sisters for once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was out running with, you know, my sauna suit on trying to make sure I get the quarantine 15 off <laughs> when I saw everybody going crazy. And lit, if I'm being honest about it, I was relieved. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason why I was relieved is because I felt energized for the first time in this particular portion uh, of the campaign. It gave me something to, to be excited about. Um, I got like a little sliver of that same feeling that I had in 08. You know, mm. I believe in Senator Harris. Um, I'm glad that they listened to uh, all the voices that wanted a black woman. It is black women's time to lead. And yeah. to Part of that empowerment uh, is very, very personally 
um, fulfilling for me, but also makes me feel better about the future of America. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Bakari, where were you and what did you do? You guys, just so you know, I did Bakari's podcast earlier. <laughs> Bakari has never not said Kamala. Like, we'd be like, what's going on? How are these people? He'd be like, Kamala. He'd be like, Bakari, why are they Kamala? Like, that was it. He's been on message since the prime, since she left the primary. He's been on message. So, Bakari, where were you? What did you do? Besides say, I told you. No, no, no. I was I was with the fam. You know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of a historical moment. I think many of us remember back then. I just just was here to hear you say that back in 2008, what it felt like. I was co-chair for Barack's campaign in in South Carolina. We were, the, you know, our first primary in the South. And I remember white folk and, and black folk alike. There were, there were two fears that people had. They were saying that we don't know um, if white folk would vote for them. And then we don't want people to kill them. Right. Those were the two fears that people had in South Carolina, oh. very real fears. Yeah. And, you know, when you think about it in 2020, people are like, nah, that's that's BS. Ain't nobody. No, but it was a very real palpable fear that people had. And so to see where we've come and to ironically, <laughs> I thought about this while I was on air earlier and said it and people gave me grief. But to, to find Joe Biden kind of at the center of this transcendent relationship. <laughs> It's 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 ironic. It's political irony, I think. Yeah. Um, but Joe Biden was the 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 vice president to the first black president, and now he's ushered in the next generation of American politics. And why do I say that? This this is this is where we are. You know, when when we look into if you think about the box when the president of the United States gives his State of the Union, um, you'll have Nancy Pelosi up there who is uh, of a certain age. You'll have Joe Biden. Um, who's of a certain age, you'll have house leadership of a certain age, and you have Kamala Harris, who's 55. Mm -hmm. And so she represents that bridge. I mean, you have Julian Castro, you have AOC, you have Cori Bush. I mean, you have all of these individuals, and I, I don't I don't want to be disrespectful at all, but it, it puts me in the mindset of uh, J. Cole's middle child, right? So you're, mm -hmm. kind, of, you're kind of in the middle of bridging these uh, generations of, of politics, and um, there's nobody more talented. We, we forget. I mean, uh, you know, you, you take out the presidential race, which is a, 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 a kind of onus on itself. But Kamala Harris has never lost a political race. I mean, I, I'm somebody who's lost. I, I sit before you as somebody who's lost statewide. I, I know what that what that sour pill tastes like and feels like. And so I've been rocking with her from the beginning. I love her. Um, we, we, we speak almost daily now. Um, I, I reached out to Dougie tonight, um, who you know, as a husband, having to center and balance those emotions. And it, imagine your wife being, you know, in the running to be vice president and kind of waiting on that call. Imagine how that week is or that those months are. And so uh, reaching out to people like Maya and Mina and those, those individuals, it's a good day. And, uh, you know, Van, Wes, Angela, I told Angela this earlier today on my podcast, look, we, our mouse wrote a lot of checks. We, we asked for this. And so, yeah. you know, we got to go out and do the work necessary. And we know that work that has to be done, but now it's on us to do it. So speaking of that work, um, I'd love for you all to weigh in on what are the next steps? Like we're celebrating today. Black folks are used to working. I'm sitting here with three black men from the South, two from South Carolina, one from Louisiana, West, you're now in Virginia, which is certainly deemed a battleground state. I, I would argue with Jamie's um, probable rise, right? Um, and po latest polling data, South Carolina could be the next battleground state. So what does tomorrow look like? Right. Well, how do we how do we ensure that this, you know, this this high energy, this celebratory moment that we're all experiencing? How do we translate that into securing the W in the fall? I think I think for a lot of us, the first thing we have to do is even on social media, focus on the people who are focused on us winning. And I think there are a lot of people who have negative things to say and all of that. And sometimes we can get wrapped up into all of that. But what's most important is let's devise a game plan to bring as many folks along the way to get this W and secure this W as possible. I've been one that's been vocal in terms of our vote must be earned. I think this is a step from the Biden campaign to earn our vote. I think there are more things that need to be done. But from a, from a standpoint of where we are in the game right now, Everyone has to find a commonality in which they're willing to agree that we must move forward in, in order to move this country forward. The, the person who's currently in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, he has to go. So yeah. collectively, we can agree on that. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I'll even add to that. I would say in order to save the country. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, the peril is very specific with the administration in there. I, I really don't think from any standpoint of a functioning government, a functioning nation, if we can survive four more years. And then I mean that in a very literal way. Yeah. So I, I tell all the people, all my brothers and sisters, they talk about uplifting the community and building structures in the community. If you want the community to exist, then mm -hmm. you're probably going to have to do some work to get the current people that are in the White House out because the whole thing might burn down. I think um, uh, to Wes's point, we have to be very intentional about uh, who it is that we're building coalitions with. But at the same time, I'd, I'd also say that a lot of the reasons that people have trepidation in terms of who to support or getting involved in the political process, those things are a lot of times have solid ground. They, they're reasons why they feel that way. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a very important step for the, for the Biden campaign to actually listen to the voices of African Americans and then respond to what they want. Mm -hmm. So that happened, it's time to A, protect her because what's gonna come for her right now is gonna be something different than she's ever seen. So we make sure that she's ready and, and, and lift and go and, and, and ready to go. But make sure that our narratives are clear into why we're supporting this particular campaign and what she means to be added to it. I mean, Biden's record is going to be out there. We all know what it is. And a lot of people have trouble reconciling that. And that should be something that we can all speak to. But we have to be able to frame this as a macro problem. Right. Problem for black people from sea to shining sea here in America. And if you make the problem big, uh, you'll see why today was such an important day um, and why we really have to kind of build around that and build on it. Right. Bakari, I'm going to end with you. Um, you all should know that the legendary Dr. Janetta Cole is waiting in after you all. So, Bakari, the Morehouse man, I'm going to let you have the last word before the former president of Spelman and Bennett College. Yeah, I know. I see. I see not only is the legendary Dr. Cole, I see is that the that the legendary Amanda Seals waiting too. So we got yeah. the legendary. <laughs> you got legends after legends after legends. No, no, I, I love, I love, I love Dr. Cole. Mm -hmm. Shout out, shout out to Dr. Cole. I'll be brief. I mean, some of the something that my, my my colleagues Van and Wes and I we we have to chat about offline is that uh, this race is gonna be won uh, with with black men. I mean, it is. We 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 lifted up our black uh, our black women the way we should. They, they, there's no question that Kamala Harris deserves to be at the top of the ticket. But we need to have an interfamily, intrafamily conversation. Inter family conversation about the role that black men are going to play in this election because we can't stand by. We, we can't allow misogyny to creep in. We can't allow anti-intellectualism to creep in. We can't allow any of that stuff. To, I mean, we, we need to yeah. go out and do the work that's necessary. And so we need to, and, and, and to Van's point, we got to listen to black men. And so we need to listen to and see where we are and see why we haven't been participating, what we need to do, and then cultivate, create, and empower um, our brothers to, to come out and show up. This this is the time. I mean, and and so no, there's no excuse for 13 percent of African American men voting for Donald Trump. And so while while black women are leading, we need to make sure that we are playing our role in our communities and, and uplifting our, our brothers to make sure that they're ready to to show out and show up in, in November. I love it. Well, awesome. they have uh, Wes and Bakari. First of all, thank you so much for taking that first big step and signing that. Um, statement of solidarity yesterday, Bakari, you will be pleased to know that that idea came from Dr. Cole. And so you I'm are- gonna read, I'm gonna read Dr. Cole's letters next time before I sign off on him. Goodness gracious. <laughs> no, she <laughs> got, those were not her words, but she said that men, black men need to stand in solidarity with black no, men. I, listen, anytime you and Latasha ask me to do something, I do it blindly and I'll do well, it again. Good. I love y'all for sure. Well, now get your blind self out of here. Van, Wes, and Bakari, <laughs> thank you all so much for doing this. I will see you soon. I'm going to chat with Dr. Cole now. Thank you so much. All right, Let's bye -bye. Love you guys. Bye bye. Dr. Cole is coming through. Dr. Genetic Besh Cole is joining us. Uh, ladies and gents and distinguished guests, um, Dr. Cole will be in just a moment. Um, we will be talking to her briefly. I don't want to keep her too long. She's already done so much to um, ensure that we are ready to go, that we are fired up, that we are inspired. And I just want you all um, to get a little bit, oh, we, maybe we're not going to Dr. Cole right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to her at the end of this. Right now, we're going to go to my good sisters who helped to draft 
an op-ed that told Joe Biden three things he must do, three things that he has done um, or that he must do to ensure um, that he gets the victory in the fall. So we're going to bring on Alicia Garza, who is here, Latasha Brown, who is also here, and Amanda Seals, who is also here. Thank you, ladies. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I mean, you know, we got one of three things done today, so I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, you know. So I want to. I want to talk to you all. This is such an important time. Um, I am super excited. Um, I started talking to the guys earlier about what needs to happen starting tomorrow. I want to hear from you all as well on that. But before we go to the work, I just want to know where you were today when you heard the news and what you did. Alicia, I'm going to start with you because you already grinned. Of course you go start with me. Well, I, you know, I'd been hearing, of course, that this was coming down all day. And so I was scrambling to get it all the way together, child. And I'm nervous, to be honest. Um, but where I was actually was in my backyard getting the first bit of sunshine that I had gotten all day. And then my phone started going ballistic. And I said, whew. I'm glad that he made the right choice because yeah. otherwise it was going to be turnt up <laughs> all the way, all the way. Latasha, where were you? What did you do? You know, I, I was supposed to go to the bank to handle my business, but I was running late. Right. <laughs> and so I was sitting, I was like, oh, God, I got to go to the bank. But then I was supposed to be on, on call for a network. So I didn't really need to move. And so I was sitting in my bathroom, right trying out um, some makeup because I'm trying to teach myself how to do my own makeup, y'all. Okay. Um, anyway, so I... You, um, you so cute. I, I did Kill good. Good. Good job. Good. So I'm literally sitting in there and I got the um, I got the news. I heard it. I was like, what? I'd be like, what's going on? And then my phone started um, blowing up. And then I sat there. I had a reaction I didn't expect to have. I actually started crying. Mm -hmm. I sat in the chair. I couldn't tell. I was like, I just started crying. I said, I have a, a vanity chair in my in my bathroom and I sat in a va vanity thank chair you. and I started crying and I just said, thank you, God. And I just said, thank you, ancestors. Just thank you. Just thank you. I just need it. I need, you know, we just been bombarded. We've been going through hell the last couple of weeks, right? I just needed some space. I just needed, I, what I felt like is I felt like the ancestors were saying, we got y'all keep moving, just keep moving, right? And so in that space, I was just like, you know, because it was interesting. A part of it was absolutely about this sister being the VP, right? But it was really more, uh, it was also about like black women. I could see my mother. I could see my grandmother. I could see, like, I literally was sitting in the space to the point where, I, you know, y'all, somebody would have thought I was schizophrenic if they had actually saw me because literally I was crying and then I started laughing. I don't know why I started laughing, but I started laughing. I had like all the human emotions. Um, and then I sat there and I got, you know, I got comfortable. I was like, all right, let's work. And I got up and I was like, all right, we ready, we ready to work. So I needed that moment. I needed a win. Sometimes we need a, just a glimmer of hope, just yeah. a little glimmer of hope. You know, like if we, if you give me a glimmer of hope, baby, I'm in there. All you got, if you, if you just give me a little crack, I'm in there. <laughs> so, okay. so today I just needed a glimmer of hope. And that's what I felt. And I, I think the other thing that I'm going to say that made me feel so affirmed is that sisters made that happen. Mm. Let's be real clear. Like, if sisters made that happen, these all of y'all, all of us, y'all know we've been on these phones till four, three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock yeah. in the morning, I'm sleeping. We getting up early in the morning, working through stuff. Um, but there's something about the solidarity that I saw with sisters around in, in this moment, in this space, that like really aff affirm that this is our moment, y'all. This is our time. Mm. I love that. Amanda, where were you? What did you do? It hasn't hit me yet. Mm -hmm. It hasn't hit me yet. Like, I got some whole other stuff going on, and it's like, but but as I knew it was going to happen, who did I hear it from? Angela Rye. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. That's and okay. That just came through. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Confirmed. It's confirmed. 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 <laughs> I'm like, all right now. Um, I got five calls. I'm just saying, I got five calls. I waited to confirm it to y'all, so I got five calls. <laughs> but I really, I was trying not to call y'all. It's, like, it's subconscious. I keep on the bus 
<laughs> I, say, I, say, say, I said I was trying not to call you out. Um, um, <laughs> again, the again is always gonna do that. Okay, yeah. sis, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead. confirm, confirm. Keep going, sis. I appreciated it because I was like, because you know, it's like you just hear the trickles of information. And I know I only accept things as fact from a certain, you know, cachet of individual. Okay. That's and right. so when I get it from Angela Rye, I know, well, it's time. <laughs> so, but I'll tell you, like, I keep having like subconscious reactions. I keep getting chills. I'll think about it and I'll, I'll get my, the hair on my arms will raise, but it's like, I haven't, I haven't had my aunts, my talk with the ancestors in the vanity chair in my bathroom moment yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't had, which by the way, was a slight flex. That it was definitely a flex. It was definitely a gave us a flex. <laughs> I have to say yes. I look at this makeup. I took a moment to commune <laughs> with the greats before I went back to making this face, what you see here, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, and I wanna just, I wanna like ground us in this moment because there was a whole ass, sorry, Dr. Cole, if you're listening, op-ed that we were drafting and we talking about rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds and yep. rounds, right? You know, just to get it right. And I think even then we really all knew what was required of us, you know? Um, and, I, and I just, for an example, um, and it's not to throw y'all under the bus, but it's pretty public. Latasha and Alicia both supported Elizabeth Warren in the primary. Right. right. So talk about what the shift was like, you know, for your from a political and a policy mm -hmm. standpoint to get you here where it was like, nah, this is where it is. What, what, tell, tell me about that. So I do want to say, like, as an organizer, there's one thing for me to have a feeling and a belief. Right. right. As an organizer, you always got to be in tapped in to what the people want and what you're feeling and the energy and know what time it is. That is like, and I think sometimes I think that there's this new approach to organizing activism that is about me and my opinion about what I want. What about what I need? What about what I want? Right. When you're a real organizer, you're grounded in community and the yeah. shape of your position is actually shaped by that community that you are serving. Yeah. And so for me, while I, I still think that Elizabeth Ward is an amazing person yeah. and will make an amazing president. Right. But at this moment, it was clear to me this wasn't her time. That at the point in which it was clear to me that our people, that we needed, that we had earned this moment, that we needed a black woman, that that based on what we have been experiencing in this whole, this racial tension, based on what we've been dealing with, with this old racist ass fascist president, that literally what I know is that the spirits, the minds and the hearts of my people needed to have a radical reimagining of what was possible. They needed to see some possibilities. And so for me, what it was is really being tapped in to the energy and the spirit of what I felt being tapped into. If my sisters are saying it, if my community is, is saying it, then it don't really, like at the end of the day, I'm going to be in alignment with my people. I am going to be in alignment with my people. And so even in that moment, I think I started seeing greater possibilities and I could even tap in to what was really needed, which was a greater call that really was much greater than just about that position. That position yeah. represents something else. Right. That for us. And so for me, that's how I got there. At the end of the day, my shaping was what I felt and what I just knew. You got to know what time it is. I knew what time it was. Mm. Yeah. Alicia. Well, Latasha, I wasn't I, I wasn't ready for that Molotov cocktail, but uh, it's a bar, though. <laughs> yes. so let me come at it. Not from the spiritual perspective, um, but I want to come at it from a different angle. I think all of us on this op ed did what. I think is an important roadmap for black power moving forward, which is that frankly, all of us had different things that we felt were really important. For me, it was the black agenda and making sure that there was a robust uh, policy platform that really put black people at the center. Uh, for others, right, it was really about representation and making sure that black voters and in particular black women who are the core of the Democratic Party, who are the engine of the Democratic Party, are being rewarded for our loyalty and that 
part of that reward is not just having our issues front and center, but it's also having people who look like us front and center. And it's saying in a clear statement um, that we believe that black women need to lead. Um, and then I think for others of us, right, there were all kinds of considerations. Mm -hmm. And frankly, you know, moving forward, what has to happen now is more of the same. The fact of the matter is, right, we need somebody who is going to energize us. And we need somebody who is going to show, right, at the end of the day, that Black women do matter to this campaign. There is still work to be done. Let's be clear. We didn't. We won a big victory today, but the work is not over. In fact, the work begins today to really make sure that there is an alignment between the symbolism of what it means to have the first Black, the, the possibility of the first Black woman as yes. vice president of this country, right. and making sure that that symbolism has substance. So for everybody watching, folks should know, we're not done, <laughs> right? Yeah. This, was, this was what was necessary in order to create the terrain for that to be possible. And mm -hmm. frankly, not every choice was going to allow us to create that terrain. I felt more strongly about who I knew I didn't want, right. yeah. <laughs> who I knew wasn't finna play, than yeah. I did about, I, I wasn't comparing uh, Senator Harris and Senator Warren. I think each of them bring unique strengths and I would have felt good about either of them being in this role. But I agree with Latasha that at this moment, black communities need a win, black voters need a win. And frankly, what has to be at the top of our agenda is making sure that everybody who can participate is motivated to do so. For mm -hmm. some people, it's gonna be about a black woman at the top of that ticket. For other people, it's gonna be about the issues that they're championing. And still for other people, it's gonna be about, you know, uh, defeating Trump and defeating Trumpism. Whatever it is, we need a whole range of a menu. We need a menu of reasons for people to show up at the polls in November. And so that's why I got on board. I am just so grateful to you all. I want to say that um, I hope that our sisters and community all over this country have what we have now created together. We have an ongoing text thread that uplifts me every single day. Sometimes it is ratchet. Sometimes <laughs> it is sophisticated, but it is always brilliant. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I mean, that's what we do. But I think that, you know, what I hope, though, is every single day you all will ground me in what I know the work is calling us to. Um, Latasha will dare us to um, mm -hmm. imagine a world without racism. Yep. Um, you know, um, Alicia will give us a few things um, <laughs> that we must work on for every time. Right. And Amanda will come through and translate it in a way that is just um just clear, like cuts right through for the culture. And I love you all so much. I'm so grateful for our sisterhood. And I'm so, so, so like happy, overjoyed that I could share today this historic moment with you all. And I just like look forward to being in the fight with you. Like there's just no better ride or die. So I love y'all. Let's so go. Yeah, we'll go all the way out because Dr. Cole is about to. Well, yeah, so we're not going to get in trouble with Dr. Cole. But Angela, people, I do want to say this, sister, yeah. that literally your leadership, like people yeah. don't know how much you do. You are yeah. the engine that don't never stop. Sister, never. you like, oh, I can't stop. You never stop. And you brought all of us together. You keep us rolling. You have the energy. So I want to say, sister, thank you. Right. Yeah. I want to say to you, Amanda, thank you. I want to say to you, Alicia, thank you. Like this is also our win today. Right. Because of our work. But Angela, I just want the world just need to know that you're not just bad on the camera, but you bad off the camera, too. So. <laughs> Facts on Tasha, <laughs> Tasha, I got one last request. Oh, you Same. already know. OK, when the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. It's our moment, sister. It's our yes. moment.
Yeah. Oh, I love you all so much. Thank you so much. Y'all keep listening to Dr. Cole though, because she gonna bring it. She brings the heat. I already know. <laughs> Reach the ABCs, and I'd be like goosebumps. Love y'all. <laughs> Bye. Dr. Cole. Thank you so much. Oh, oh my gosh. My oh my gosh. So I, I know we don't have a ton of time. I know it's late for you. Um. But I'm just so grateful. I have been so blessed to hear you um, on our organizing calls. And I just have to tell you, Dr. Cole, one of the first big girl books that my dad bought me was your book. And you to be able to be in your midst and to learn from you and to hear your wisdom has just been such an incredible and important part of this journey for Black women. And so I really just want you to tell us um, about the significance of today and what we need to do going forward. And I just want to, I yield the complete floor to you. Star Jones is up next, but I know you have stuff to share with us and I just want to hear from you. That's it. Mm. Angela, I began with the strongest virtual hug for you that is imaginable. You know, this journey that we were on that took the form of that letter written by Black women, that in itself is her story. And I say that because we came together, able to have our differences and so quickly come back into a collective spirit. But of all the things I would say about our convening, you know I'm going to lift up that we are truly intergenerational. I mean, you know, if you've seen one Black woman, you haven't seen us all. We are of different generations. We are of different classes. We got to own it. And Lord knows we have different colors. <laughs> we are of different sexual orientations. We have different choices for who should be the vice presidential candidate. But we found unity. <laughs> it was amazing. And I'm going to tell you, it was full of grace. Yeah. Full of grace. And when I think back over the years that have brought us here, I know I can, I can do the roll call. We can all do the roll call, beginning with Sojourner Truth and coming all the way down. But let me tell you something. There were young Black women in that struggle every part of the journey. Yeah. And I lift up right now, Sister Angela, I lift up a Spellman woman. I lift up Ruby, Doris, Robinson, Smith, mm. the only Black woman to serve as secretary of SNCC who died in her 20s. But she and other Black students, women, at Spelman, as they had done at Bennett, joined with brothers. And so this is a time for all generations of black women mm -hmm. to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. <sighs> I mean, there is um, a pressure that I've been feeling in my chest for the last several months since we learned about the um, the passing or the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. And as we still wait for justice to unfold in those cases and so many others that we can't name, um, this just felt like a little bit of relief, you know, just like a little bit of validation, um, a little bit of um, being able to see us you know, and um, Congresswoman Marsha Fudge was on with me earlier and she talked about how 
um, it was vindication, you know, and every single time that you're on, it just is a reminder of how power, I mean, just your voice, you know, it's just, you're just so powerful. And I just really want to thank you for not just having us stand on your shoulders, but to be standing shoulder to shoulder with oh, us. Oh, I love that. Us. Shoulder to shoulder. Oh my gosh. You I'm know, I'm interrupting you because I know my sister, Star Jones, needs to be here. Mm -hmm. But Angela, mm -hmm. I am totally convinced that we would not have that victory today if George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, mm -hmm. if our brother Aubrey had not had their lives taken from them. Because the moment is not an ordinary moment in our yeah. country. And yes, this is their day. Up there in glory, let me tell you, there is some shouting going on. <laughs> yeah. And while we never, ever, ever, ever again want to see the kind of brutality mm -hmm. that our people have been subjected to, yeah. let us know that this is a kind of vindication. You're so right. Mm -hmm. And the final thing I got to say, my sister, Angela. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Dorothy Irene Height, called by President Obama as the godmother of the civil rights movement. She once said this, if the time is not right, huh? You have to ripen the time. <laughs> yes. And our group of intergenerational Black women, I'm convinced we ripen the time. Yes. And let's lift it up for our brothers who came in with their own letter. Yes. In support of Black women. This is a historic day. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Cole. Thank you for your leadership. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much. And now I want to bring on our dear sister and friend, Star Jones, the legendary Star Jones, who is hosting our final hour. Star, thank you so much. And I'm, I apologize for um, no, I was just enjoying. Are you kidding me? Whenever we can sit at the knee of the legendary yeah. Dr. Cole, you just sit here and you just listen. I mean, and Angela was just so right to have the opportunity, Dr. Cole, just to to listen to you help us organize what meant so much to so many women, and to have you treat us like colleagues. Ooh, Made us feel like big girls, right, Angela? Like you mean? Now she rose. Star. Like we real star. Stop it. She rose. Star. Oh. Stop it. But I'm gonna no, say don't you eat Dr. Cole. Yes, ma'am. And ma just peace and blessings. And now let's get the rest of this work done. Yes. Let's get the yes. rest of the yes. work yes. done. Let Good. it go. Good night, my dear. Good night. I and love you. Angela, I'm just so glad that we were able to do this. Um, I mean, um, I don't even know if we ever fully processed it together. Mm. You know, we've been, I think back to us sitting on a beach Woo, yes. in Miami, Florida, yes. and starting to talk about what our vision was mm. for this country. And it always started with black women. Yeah. Remember, we were plotting and planning, sitting on the beach in Miami. Yes. And it was all about it could not be done unless sisters were doing it together. A thousand. And I don't even know how many years that was. I don't Two even know years. how many years. No, it was four years ago. No. Yeah, it was longer than that because it was during Leading Women Defined. Yeah, it was four it years was ago. At a black women's gathering yes. that we started just talking about what black women 
we're going to do for ourselves. And so I'm just so honored that you would ask me to come and join this evening. Um, as you can see, I'm in straight up. Pink and, green. <laughs> and I will be in pink and green. You better, you better rock your pink and green this entire election cycle. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to be able to um, bring on some people this evening in this next hour to just honor what this this day meant for us, but to also just say, um, Black women, we rise. Yes, so sir. I'm gonna let you rise with your hour. I'm like, my cheeks hurt. I know you are, but I love you and I'm so, so honored. You have to be quiet. You have to be quiet. I love you more. Bye bye. Thank you, sweetheart. And I would love to bring on my other sister, love, um, who has been working with me this entire time. And look, I already got her in pink. I got my pink on, my girl. I got my pink on. You got my pink on, my, got my, pink on my girl, Sharon Finney. I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's a day. It's, it's a day. day. It's a day. It's a day. It's a day. And we needed but it, girl. We, we needed did. it. Senator it's Kamala Harris yeah. is the Democratic nominee for Vice President of the United Ooh. States of America. And <laughs> you know, I woke up this morning um, yeah. and I couldn't stop crying. I had no idea why. Yeah. Nothing had happened, nobody had called, but I just couldn't stop crying. And I, I felt like the ancestors were talking to me. Yeah. And you know what I did. You know I reached out to <laughs> my normal crew, my normal crew, <laughs> Karen Pitty, Mignon Moore, Donna Brazil, Leah right. and said, um, I can't stop crying. I know. I love you. We're like, are you are you still asleep? I'm like, no, I'm awake. I've just been awake. You know, I, same thing. I've been awake, thinking and and think, reflecting that. Wow, if this happens today, how am I going to feel? I mean, so well, how did you feel? Oof. I mean, because bring it back. I'm. I, I mean, I want people to know why we're talking because yes. we've been talking about this for a very long time. That's right. And um, you know that I was all on board with Kamala from the second she, yeah. Yeah. she was running for president. I mean, literally the second. That's right. So we've been together a long time. We, this day. we have been, and you know, here's the thing I want people to know. It was not, I love how now people are saying, oh, well, it was the obvious choice. It was, no, it was not. I mean, it was obvious to many of us who support Kamala, but I want folks to know this was not a foregone conclusion. There was a lot of hard work that went on to make the case for a black woman to point out what it is that black women bring to the table when we're talking about an election, that we are 16 million strong in this country. That's how many of us are eligible to vote. Now, y'all, I want y'all to register and vote because we don't all vote in those numbers. But we know that when we show up, we can actually influence the outcome of an election. And when we don't show up, it matters. Right. And so, and we kind of had to help make that case and get people to take seriously that also the lived experience of a yeah. black woman in this country needed to be at one of the highest decision-making tables in this country. That case had to be made. It was not a foregone conclusion. And, you know, we're so blessed that, I mean, you know, Dr. Cole is one of my heroes. We have so many amazing, beautiful women who came before us who helped us get to this moment. I think that's part of the spirit you were feeling this moment. Yes. Um, but I just I want been trying not to cry every time one of you opens your mouth. I'm sorry. I know. Yes. I, I have to tell you, I thought of my, my great aunties, uh, Estelle and Tish and Goldie and I thought about how you know when the voting for women when the 19th amendment was passed they weren't able to vote it wasn't until 1965 two years before I was born that they actually had the right to vote and now I mean I just thought of that arc you know from that from slavery to the vice presidency yes and and We've had, we've had a black president. We've had Barack Obama. He opened this door for us. He helped get us here. Hillary Clinton helped get us here as women. Very much so. Right? And you, you, all, you know, you and I were together with, on Hillary. It's like, that's our girl. But oh, it will be. 
this is something so blessed and so special. And she is so perfect. Every She's single so thing about Senator Harris is right on point and lines up. But for you, because I have you and I can pick your brain, um, take us inside what the what the today was like <laughs> for the new vice presidential candidate. I, you know this experience. Yeah. You were there when Tim Kaine was picked. What happened to her? How did she find out? And yeah. what is the next hour, two hours, five hours of her life? What did it look like? <laughs> so I imagine, you know, I imagine it kind of, if she didn't know this morning, which she probably didn't, because that we know that the vice president, uh, Vice President Biden had said that he was going to make calls and call each of the women that were the finalists who were not selected and call his his selection. So, you know, we started to hear that some of those calls were getting made. So we, she, you know, she probably has been just, do, you know, one thing about Kamala is, you know, with all the noise, she just puts her head down and gets the work done, right? And, and Lord knows as a Senator, there is plenty of work to do right now. So- And she's been working this whole time. I mean, she's introducing legislation this entire time. And that's one of the things that has impressed us both. That's right. And, and fighting, to make sure that as people fall off this cliff, they have money and resources and we're dealing with housing. So, you know, she was probably doing her thing yes. and, and gets this call. There was a, a, a image released of a Zoom, what looked like a Zoom call between she and Vice President Biden when he was giving her the news. And we know that Corinne Jean-Pierre, who was announced as my other beautiful sister, who is going to be the chief of staff uh, for the vice presidential campaign and to extend her house, came to her house, uh, you know, probably a quick congratulations and then right to work, you know, get on this phone call with Vice President Biden. But then literally everything changes. We're at a, I would imagine she will have Secret Service protection fairly soon if, if yes. she's not already, because although traditionally the vice presidential nominee won't necessarily get it till about the convention, in this instance, we're so close, I suspect she and her mm -hmm. husband, and that completely changes everything in your life. So there's a briefing with those Secret Service. They tell, here's our protocols, here's what you need to know. Uh, about about what we need to know about your life, and here's how we're gonna do things. Uh, and then you know, I'm sure she and her and she called the family, which was exciting. All of their lives have changed, and I'm sure they got instructions about how to proceed in the next 24 hours. And you know, as you are starting to get briefed up, because remember, she is now having to go, you know, from zero to a thousand right into the campaign. And a week from tomorrow, she has to deliver the most important speech of her lifetime. Yes, indeed. And you know, the best part about it is, I ain't stirred. I am so I'm not stirred. Her, but she got to, she's got to make time to prep for it. She's going to get that done. You know, that's the thing um, that I have loved about this process. Um, you know that Kamala and I have known each other for 30 years. That's right. She's my soror, my sister. She pledged at Howard. I was at American. I was the big sister. Mm -hmm. I would want you to know that that one right there, she has always been about the business. And so mm -hmm. I have no doubt whatsoever. I appreciate you so much bringing us inside yeah. what the first few hours after she found out uh, would have looked like. I can't wait for us to get a chance to say hello to the new vice presidential nominee um and we will be the next vice president of the united states of america thank you very much and i think we're going to get our first look at she and vice president biden together it looks like tomorrow um, Fantastic. so that will be exciting so no doubt tonight she's prepping for that i mean this is it is a you know it is wow. i'll leave you with this thought it is a huge to say the least moment to step into, she's ready for this. She will be beautiful and bold and brilliant, but she is stepping right into the middle of a tough campaign. And as you saw today, Trump didn't waste any time attacking her. You know what? And you know exactly what I said. <laughs> he might need to reserve that for them white boys he is used to playing with, because you coming for a sister now and she brings the village with her. And let me be real clear. I know how to take earrings off and I got plenty of Vaseline. And if it's a fight you want, let's get ready to fight. Because we are, we are not playing. We are not playing. Biden-Harris 2020 is what we're talking about right now. 
That's right. That's it. Well, that's it. You know, listen, I'm laid down the gauntlet for real, though. Seriously. <laughs> they have no idea what they're messing with now. They have no idea who they are messing with. I heard somebody say that uh, Trump should be happy that he doesn't have to face her on the debate stage. That it's Very much so. Because <laughs> he might be reduced to tears, okay? He might be. I mean, he might be. Bless her for him. Because she's but so all right. But that's all right. She'll, she will whack the floor with whomever. You don't want to get into that with, with, with the senator, okay? I think yeah. that, I think Mr. Barr knows that experience already. So, Karen, thank you so much for hanging yeah, with me for a little bit. You know you and I will probably end up with one of our midnight phone calls. I was going to say, I got my phone. Just to call recap, me, but I thank you again. I, I know, call me, call, I'll talk to you when we're finished. Thank you so much, sis. So, speaking of the AKAs and me sitting here in all this pink and green, um, there is a wonderful member of Alpha Kappa Alpha who is a soror, both being Kamala, but she's also the president of the Planned Parenthood International. And so Alexis McGill Johnson is joining us. Alexis, where were you when you found out, sis? I was on the road. I was actually at a friend's house. And I'm, I just want to clarify, I'm the president of Planned Parenthood Action Fund in this conversation. I um, I was on the road um, uh, meeting with a friend of mine and uh, her husband, my, my cell service was a little bit out, but I could feel my phone buzzing in my bag. You know how it is where you're like kind of in conversation and you're like deep in conversation and then all of a sudden your phone is like, and I was like, something is going on. I don't know what it is. And it was, um, it was blowing up. It was blowing yeah, up. It was blowing phone up. was blowing up. Phone was literally blowing up. And I said, I got to I got to figure out what. So I made my way out of the conversation. But before I could, her husband walked in and said, it's Kamala. And I swear to you, I, my outer body of experience of just being like, wow, like here we are in this moment, this incredible moment where, you know, so many of us and our sisters have been advocating for what what it would mean to have a black woman in this position at this time what it would mean to actually energize and um you know someone who is like has a track record and a you know for someone who is like so invested in issues of reproductive justice and freedom and, and racial justice and freedom and who has lived at the intersection of that it just felt like oh my god we we here we are. And I, you know, you were my first call driving out the driveway, trying to get the service. I, and I was like, look what you, look, look what you, look what y'all done did. <laughs> I mean, you know what? It was a great coalition of black women and black men and allies of different communities. And that's actually something that I wanted to talk to you about because one of the things I did in looking at um, what this next administration is going to be facing um, was to put together sort of a, a list of what I call the 20 for 20 um, with mm -hmm. um, a young colleague, Reese Colbert, and we put this, this list together to really analyze what the next administration will be looking towards and who would be the best fit for it. And one of the major issues has to be um, collaboration with organizations that represent issues that matter to our communities. And and you um, have spoken on these issues many times. So can you just frame for us some of the things that this next administration will be needing to focus on and especially how important it is to have an ally like Kamala Harris in that position? Yeah, I mean, uh, first what I would just like to talk about is that is the fact that um, having an ally who has been on the, on the Judiciary Committee and has seen the trickery that has happened over the last four years that to seen the 200 judges who um, have really like have have done this litmus test for um, this this you know for Mitch McConnell essentially to roll back rights for um, for women for people of color you know across the board you know they have appointed over 200 very conservative judges on women's health some judges you know who judges who, who don't support access to safe and legal abortion, some judges who don't even support IVF. 
And so like we are literally watching the the federal judiciary be remade under this administration and knowing that what's at stake when we are 15 cases that are winding their way up, there are 15 cases that are one step away um, from the Supreme Court, not to mention our Supreme Court nominees, right? Because we know like all of that is in play, but even thinking about the infrastructure leading up to the Supreme Court and knowing that Kamala has been someone, so are Kamala, Senator Harris, you know, future Vice President Harris has been someone who is, um, who has been dogged in the fight. She has been the one who took on Brett Kavanaugh, right? She's the one who has taken on over and over candidates, um, you know, around these conversations. Star, did I lose you, honey? Well, maybe I lost Star, but I'll just tell you all who are still listening. Absolutely. I'm going to pick up where Star left off until okay, we get her right. back I in. Like, maybe I lost this, but I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> no, about, we definitely want you to keep talking because that was rich and we don't want to lose it. No, no, no. And I want to talk about the just the impact of the courts, because like I can talk about it from the vantage point of someone who has been a, a longtime volunteer and supporter and now staff around issues of reproductive rights and justice. But like we're, when we talk about the courts, we're talking about racial justice. We're talking about uh, what's happening in immigration. We're talking about what's happening in LGBT community. We're talking about what's happening with our banks. We're ha- I mean, like every single facet, Holly, that like it impacts our daily lives is part of what we're up against. And so to have somebody who does fully understands that, who's worked with Vice President Biden on that, you know, on that same issue in his capacity um, on the Judiciary Committee, it just really, really matters. And so, you know, we have seen what happens when we when you have a breakdown between, you know, executive, legislative and our judicial branches, right? I mean, you can see what happens when our Congress is captured when the presidency is captured and when the the judiciary is captured and the supreme court is captured there are no checks and balances and we have somebody who really understands that and who will work to fight for that camera on absolutely and so you know in that same vein as an attorney myself you know the one thing i think about is this is great but you know as attorneys we're always thinking about the next so how important is it going to be and how fundamental is it going to be to make sure that we get that other promise of a Supreme Court justice? Hundred percent. No, we we. I mean, like this is this is the the. I mean, it is it is an extraordinary opportunity to have Senator Harris. I keep saying future Vice okay. President okay. Harris, right? Because okay. I think we we bring her all the way up, you know, to where she is. You know, future Vice President, future President. I think even to continue advocating and to make sure that we are going to get a Supreme Court justice. And to make sure, you know, so much of what this administration has done is they've unwound all, um, all of our agencies. You know, they are they are not fully staffed. They have not been, you know, fully effective. And so there's so much work that we need to unwind to do that this admi- next administration is going to have to do. So we're going to have to like really make sure that we have the right people in place to staff all the agencies and to make sure that we also have the right pipeline into into the court and i think all of none, none of these things are mutually exclusive we need to we need to have all the things absolutely well thank you star for letting me tag in i'm going to let you continue I the conversation with, uh, with our sisterhood thank, thank you, so you so much thank you very much thank you holly for coming in we had a little technical difficulty but that's all right and alexis You know how much I appreciate you and talking about some of the intersectionality that we're going to be facing and the the kinds of um, leadership that we're going to need. And so from one sorrow to another, ski wee. I'm so glad that we we have our girl in there. I don't know what to do. So thank you. I'm about to bring on actually the international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, um, uh, Dr. Glenda Glover. Dr. Glover, are you here? Yes, you are. And I see you got a big shield in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lover. How are you? I am so happy. As you can see, I am so I happy. Know. This and is an amazing day. This is a great day for the country. It's a great day for, for African Americans. a great day for women. It's just a great day across this country. I'm just and for HBCUs. Dr. Glover, let me just start with that because 
of course, as Alpha Alpha women, we are thrilled beyond belief. But you you have to be doubly thrilled as the president of an HBCU um, to see a graduate of Howard University at HBCU have to be the first uh, black and brown woman to be a major nominee has to just everything that you have worked for come to fruition in one day. It is. Uh, Senator Harris's selection is a is a full circle moment in her life as it, to, to come from having been initiated Alpha Kappa Alpha at Howard University to have attended uh, Howard University, um, one of the premier HBCUs. I mean, second only to Tennessee State University, and so in the HBCU world. And so <laughs> you were supposed to laugh start that one. You know? I did. I but, did. I did. I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so wonderful that HBCUs can take this as pride that we feel now that you know we've trained you to be ambitious. And of course, that became a dirty word during <laughs> a few, well, a few days. It shouldn't become a dirty word. I don't it understand became, that. Can you believe that it became a dirty word? You were too ambitious. That's what we, that's what we train. That's our hallmark. That's what we do. We, when we see ambitious women, Black women, we know we've done our jobs. And so and it, you actually said that, um, um, Dr. Glover, you said that an ambitious woman who is achieving makes the HBCU stand up and cheer because that means you've done your job. Exactly. HBCUs pre prepare leaders. Tell me about that. Well, Tell that, me why that's a saying. That is precisely what HBCUs do. Students come to us with, I mean, sometimes they're dejected and sometimes they're, they don't have this sense of self-worth that we're to build up and let them know you want to be, be you want to be ambitious. You are, you are hopeful. We, we put that spirit, we instill that spirit in you that you can, you can achieve, you can see it, you can be it. And so we're glad to see ambitious young ladies and young men and to hear someone say, oh, she's too ambitious. That was, that is such an insult. It's such a slap in the face. <laughs> so of all the training that HBCU and other universities do, the PWIs do the same. They want you to become ambitious. But you know, that's just a cold word. We know what that means. That you're out of your lane, you're out of your place. So we'll wrap it up and make it into a negative and call that ambitious. We know what that what that's all about. The dog whistle. We're we're not crazy. But she still made it through it throughout all of that. It's just today is such an amazing day because they've tried everything. And I just saw an ad that came out from the other the, the Trump camp today. There's all kinds of craziness, but it's going to be fine. It's the, having a black woman on the ticket is, you know, because black women have been the backbone for, the, for years and years and years. And we've been this backbone and we have voted, have, have supported the Democratic Party for so long and to sw have swayed elections. You know what I'm talking about. We have been, we've been, <laughs> we've proven, they've proven their allegiance to the Democratic Party and have, have just changed elections. We've changed the trajectory of significant political races across the country. And so to, to put Kamala on the, uh, Senator Harris on the ticket today, means that that energy is coming. When the black women come, they don't just come by themselves. They bring their family, they bring their community, they bring their sorority sisters, they bring, they bring it and go to the poll. Fantastic. I'm, I mean, and, and Dr. Glover, I, I know you're excited because I have two of our colleagues of uh, Senator Kamala Harris, um, Congresswoman Alma and Congresswoman Lee, who yes. are members yes. of what we call the Alpha Kappa Alpha delegation. That's right. We have the That's largest the delegation, delegation right. of, of sorority, of any sorority in the Congress with eight members of Congress. And um, sorry, I'm hot. Nice to see you. Excuse me, Congresswoman. I, you know, I'm gonna call you Sarah in a minute. You know, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Good to see you again. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. today. It was I, great, it was great I thought you were going to burst into tears today when I was talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely excited. Certainly a big win for for women everywhere, for African-American women in particular, for all the little girls. who Listen, like you said, you can, you can be what you see. And uh, I'm just so excited uh, about uh, my Soror, uh, uh, the 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 honorable senator from California who will be our next vice president. Uh, we've done a lot of work together on black maternal health. And I mean, she's always on the right side at the right time of all of the right issues. And you're right. I know Trump is just, uh, uh, he's just glad that uh, she's not uh, going, she's not running and will be, be uh, challenging. Him, but not, not debating him. <laughs> you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah, it's an exciting time, and you're right. We're going to bring it. Uh, we're going to bring all of our sisters and our mamas and aunties, and uh, listen, we're going to bring all of the, the the young people from the HBCUs, and certainly we applaud uh, our HBCUs because you know that's what we produce. Uh, I am uh, I'm a proud graduate myself. My grandson's at Howard. Uh, so I got to tell him we got a bison sister. All right now. In the White House. So listen, and, and Sarah Star, thank you so much for pulling this all together. Uh, it is just um, certainly um, an incredible, incredible day. I don't think, uh, I think uh, Biden, this is, this is the, uh, what, uh, what do you say, build back better with a Biden-Harris ticket. And I'm riding mm -hmm. with Biden and Harris all the way. So thank I you all that. for joining us. today. Yeah. Thank you. Sarma, you know I wasn't gonna it doesn't do this without putting together my SOAR leaders. You know how much I loved it and speaking of which uh SOAR Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee has joined us. Um so uh your colleague is now the vice presidential nominee for the Democratic <laughs> Party, uh Representative Lee. Yeah. What was your first reaction when you found out, ma'am? Well, there were moments of uh teary eyes because it was an emotional moment. Uh, this is a moment that one will never forget. It's almost like you asked where you've been in significant times in our history and you have to remember where you, you were and you'll never, never forget. Uh, the moment I heard it and uh, I must say a real cry, one of joy, but this is uh, really uh, an affirmation of all that black women have done uh, all of the toiling and the marching and all of the brilliance and genius of black women, unsung, unknown, and all of the journeys that the Sojourner Truths have taken, Madam C.J. Walker has taken, uh, the likes of Fannie Lou Hamer and Shirley Chisholm and Barbara Jordan, all of them have taken mm -hmm. walks that we have been proud of, but they yeah. could have managed, if given that dignity and respect, to be in places beyond one's expectation. Shirley Chisholm, a president of the United States, Barbara Jordan. So Madam Supreme, I want to thank you so very much for gathering us and having my Sora star bring us together. I think it is important um, that uh, we mobilize and that we let no one in essence put us, uh, put us asunder. There will be attacks that we cannot even imagine, and there's nothing more like armor bearers uh, than the multitude of sorrows, including our own sorority. We will reach out to all of the divine yes. nine. Everyone must stand in line. Everyone must be marching toward victory. And to Joe Biden, um, I always knew of him as a compassionate man. He always affirmed women, I'm talking about his wife and daughters and 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 certainly uh we worked together on the violence against women act so i knew that he was a stand-up guy we are going to build back better and obviously saw off senator kamala harris uh, what dignity but but what i liked about her and i said this tonight yes she was a prosecutor and yes um she was a first and the uh, don't tell Tell me that we were. I think. The, I think the congresswoman's um uh, connection is uh, is going in and out. 
Yeah. I think, yeah, we may have lost her. Um, you know, uh, Congresswoman Adams, uh, the last time we were all together, Dr. Glover and you and me and and all, all of the delegation, we had the opportunity, the unique, unique opportunity to put all eight members. Um, and what is it going to be like to have an ally um, who is a sister and not just, I'm not talking skin sister, but I'm talking sorority sister also, um, literally at the table of influence, which was what our conversation was about not two weeks ago. You're exactly right. Listen, um, we have a seat at the table now and that is so very important. I mean, we represent, uh, 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 Senator Harris represents thousands and thousands more. And so uh, yes. we're gonna have a voice there. She won't have to bring in a folding chair. Uh, her, her seat's gonna already be there for her. And uh, we are so proud of that because uh, we know that she's gonna represent us. Listen, uh, she's, uh, she's, she's struggled, she knows the struggles. Uh, she identifies with the poor. Uh, she identifies with uh, women who are struggling. All you have to do is look at the legislation that um, that she champions. Uh, it's really about helping to lift as she climbs. And, and that's what we got to continue to do. Uh, and, and Congresswoman Jackson Lee was absolutely correct. Uh, they're going to be throwing everything they can. And so we're going to have to mount up. Uh, we're going to have to suit up. We're going to have to stand up. And we're going to have to cut up when we have to. And that's all right. As, 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 as your colleague, Rep. Lewis, would say, it's about to be some good trouble. Some good trouble. <laughs> you, you dog all right. <laughs> I am just, um, you know, I'm just so elated. And I do think that, uh, again, look at the image uh, for our young black girls and, and girls of color. The fact that uh, we're going to be able to see someone in the White House again. Uh, who looks like you're going you're gonna to have a, 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 a woman, an African-American woman who uh, really cares about you, who really understands the struggles because she's had them too. And so, uh, listen, all of my 1,209 hats are off to uh, Sora, uh, Senator Kamala Harris. I, I am just so delighted. Uh, and uh, uh, Madam, uh, Madam uh, Supreme, uh, thank you for staying in there. She got so upset uh, about the uh, ambitious word. You know? <laughs> yes. I got to put on phone calls. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I know I it. Phone calls. Yeah, late night for some <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Who does to be ambitious? That's what we produce mm -hmm. at our HBCUs. That's what Alpha Kappa women are all about. <laughs> so listen, I, we don't apologize for that. No, uh, no, no, no. That's what we look for. Yeah, that's exactly. I that's the way I'm trying to apologize for being ambitious. You know, clearly, if you're going to even run for office, any office, you've got to have some ambition about you. Right. I don't I'm think that ambitious. people were prepared, though, for the reaction today. Yeah. Um, and I, I, what is very important for me to convey by the uh, connection of the sisterhood. Alpha Kappa Alpha is just one part of the sisterhood that she brings to the table. Yes, we are 300,000 strong, but our sisterhood is connected to the other sororities within the Divine Nine, That's plus right. the other 12 Black women-led organizations that Dr. Glover convened uh, with her colleagues to start to talk about women in positions of power and mm -hmm. influence. And so that entire village comes along with Senator Harris, and That's we're right. ready for a fight. Mm -hmm. So uh, Joe Biden, he just got a sisterhood that he never even counted. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know, uh -huh. they're, talk, they're talking about Alpha Kappa Alpha, but I've heard from all the divine nine. So mm -hmm. they're ready to, to just chip in. They want to, what can we do? What can we do to help? We want to make sure we get across that finish line. And that's yeah. what's very important. Yeah. Work starts. That's right. That won't that won't make it. We can't we can't do that tomorrow, anymore. ladies. That's right. Tonight, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Uh tip your hat. All right. Take your glass and <laughs> cheers to our sister. 
Cheers all right. to our sister. Cheers to our sister. So thank you all very much for joining me, Dr. Glover. I'm so thank glad I've seen you today. I'm sure we'll have our morning talk tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Thank you again. And you know, um, uh, it's not just the organizations that have been really standing by. Some of my dear friends in Hollywood have been right there plugging along. And so I'm just so proud to introduce you to my very best friend in the world who we met as a part of the sorority, the phenomenal actress, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Um, and hello, sis. Hey, sissy. And my brother, let me introduce you to Bill Bellamy, uh, who I am always with on Monday. So I've got Bill and I got Vanessa on my Hollywood con constituency. Vanessa, start with you. You and I met at the Boule, which is our national convention, all those years ago. 30, 32 years ago. 30, 32 years ago. That's where we met. 32 and years ago so, this, this past July. That's right. That's Last our sisterhood month. right there. Mm -hmm. So talk to the people about what the sisterhood brings to the table um, yeah. through Kamala. Well, just like you said, Star, Joe Biden has no idea all the sisters, all the black powerful women, sisters, mamas, teachers, educators, nurses, doctors, psychologists, lawyers. He has no idea all the women he just inherited who are getting ready to fight for him tooth and nail. Because the one thing about black women, and I'm sure you know women in general, but what I know about black women, I'm a black woman, so I can only speak from my perspective. We come hard, we come strong. And when we say, sister, I need your help, everybody drops what they doing and they show up at Alpha Kappa Alpha Women ain't no joke. As I say, baby, the ski we train has just left the station. So <laughs> America, hold on, because you ain't seen some pink and green supreme hit yet. And the devil right. gonna be joining us, the divine nine, like we like you ladies with all my sores were just saying, the divine nine. It's getting ready to be on and popping. I want I want Trump and them to stop this train that's getting ready to happen. Because uh -huh. not only the sorors, it's going to be, like you all were saying, every organization. I, I'm so optimistic because we need this shot of adrenaline so bad in this country right now. And I'm Ooh. so optimistic because I see lines like we saw in 08 for Obama. I see it. I see it in my vision. Yes. And, Somebody on TV today said, um, well, you know, people don't usually vote. I think it was, you know, who, you know, who he is. People don't usually vote for the vice president. I said, oh, but in this case, you wrong, brother. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, we, oh, no, we're voting for Biden. No, don't trust. And we oh, yeah. voted, we would have voted for Biden no matter who he would have had as a, a running mate, because that's how bad we want Trump out. But the fact that he got the for the best person for the job who checks all the boxes and Thank he's gonna you. have and who's gonna have the Indians and the other uh, ethnic groups because she's mixed of mixed descent and she's married to a white man. She got a lot of boxes that she checked. A lot of people gonna come uh, and rally around her. So yeah, I hate to tell you, Mr. President, in this case, yeah, we voting for Joe, but we voting for her too. <laughs> oh so, yeah, baby. Don't that's just what that is. Don't, don't think that people ain't gonna be voting because they not gonna be voting for the price, vice president pick. They definitely are now gonna be voting because Kamala is a part of the ticket. And I just wanna say one more thing real quick, Scar. I'm so, you know, people are, we know they're coming for her. We know some of her prosecutor, her record has not been what a lot of people would have wanted. But I'll say this, if people can get around a redneck racist who has done all kinds of divisive things, who said, grab the woman by the P when he was running, call people out for their uh, intellect and for their race and for their uh, disabilities when he was running, not as president. If he could be as nasty as he want to say all day about how nasty she is, if he want to say all, if he could be that nasty when he was running, I think that anybody who has any problem with her record, you need to get over and let it go because everybody is not perfect. The bigger picture is what's important now. And if she could redo some things, she probably would say, well, maybe I would have looked at that differently than had I known now, or I see 
I see things differently now than I did then. Whatever she would say. But if we, if, if half America, or not even half, because he didn't win by pop the vote. But if, if those Americans can rally around him with all of his divisive efforts and all his racism and all that nasty stuff he said when he was a candidate, I think everybody needs to get over anything you don't like about Kamala. Well, I, I, well, li listen, first of all, I'm a former prosecutor and I can tell you right now, you always want somebody on the inside, sweetheart. You cannot change the criminal justice system right. from the outside and you need somebody on the inside. And speaking of being on the inside, my brother Bill Bellamy, oh, uh, wow. we were just on yesterday doing yes. peace <laughs> and we talked about this very moment and you oh. were a part of the letter that a lot of people are saying helped push this over the top, the brother's letter that basically said, this is who we want. Yes. And if you don't come correct, you're going to be looking at a bad situation. That's what y'all say. Listen, I, I'm, I'm the biggest supporter. I think it's a moment in history that will never be forgotten. It is pivotal right now for, you know, for so many reasons, the ancestors, the the, the all uh, 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 all the all the civil rights leaders for the Obamas, what they did to have a person like like Vanessa said that checks all the boxes. You know, you can go. Everyone's made mistakes and did that and the other, but right now it's exactly what we need. We need. I, I said this earlier, right? I said you can't change the you can't change the recipe unless you're in the kitchen. <laughs> so we got to have a new chef in there that you know can bring some flavor and some insight and intellect. And then you then you got all the sorors and the HBCs. And there's so much like galvanizing power right now. I feel like we we are Wakanda. <laughs> yes, it's our time. It's our time, Bill. Yeah. Um, just ask me this: What do you think the brothers will bring to the table for this? Because we've been talking a lot about what the sisters will bring to the table, mm -hmm. but the brothers, I think they will have uh, Senator Harris. Oh, absolutely. I think I think it's going to be a perfect time for us to push. It's 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 momentum. It's uh it's symbolic. You know, we have to be together to get through this thing, to get to a better yeah. place. So we're going to galvanize on both ends. You know, we got to support our sisters. We got to support the initiative. You know, we got to keep this Black Lives, you know, movement alive with for our equality, for, you know, criminal reform, uh, you know, for the justice stuff that that's upside down. Oh, just think of all the things that we'll have a little more of a chance to change or to 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 adjust. If, if you if you to pick a completely different person, that's that'd be a whole side of the building not applied right. to, right? So the beauty of this, you know, when you think back right now, we just lost um Congressman Lewis, right? Can you imagine if he had lived just a couple of more weeks to see this moment? This is like Today I was emotional. I was just like, oh my God, I just wish my mom was alive and my grandmothers yeah. to see what could be. You know, this is one of those moments of that I want my daughter to see that, you know, you you guys can dream as hard as you want and you can get there. It, it's, it ain't no ceilings. And forget what he's talking about, ambition. That's how we that's everything we are. That's, that's who we everything. are, baby. That's who, that we, is who we are. You know, um no, guys, I want to bring in um my colleague Chris Scott. Chris Scott is from the Collective Pack, and he, hey Chris, and he is the political director of the Collective Pack. Chris, I just wanted you to come on briefly and just tell us what's the next step. What is it? Because you've got some Hollywood constitu constituents here. We want to get busy. The work starts tomorrow. What is our next step, Chris? What should we be looking for? What should we be getting ready to do? Well, absolutely, uh, Star One, thanks for having me. I think it's mobilizing. And yeah. I, I understand that, you know, you have your different wings of the party and you have your reserves. But at the end of the day, the type of qualifications that Kamala Harris brings to this ticket, yeah. I mean, you talk about a change maker. You talk about a record breaker. You talk about a history maker. She checks all of the boxes yes, at the end of the day. So it's a matter of 
we have to get mobilized. We have to be ready to go out and vote. We have to be ready to actually support unapologetically. When we talk about we need to see more representation, let's put in the numbers here. You have 130 women running for Congress this year, Black women running for Congress. And at the top of your ticket, you have a Black woman as the vice presidential nominee. First time in history. You don't need uh, any other marching orders other than that. And then on top of that, she's right. a hey, let's go. Grad. Let's put it out go. That. She's a Howard grad. Yes. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, which yes. is a whole nother <laughs> spectrum of the army that comes with that. As a member of Phi Beta Sigma, you have to be excited. I know yes. it else. <laughs> if anything else, I will always take somebody that looks like me, that understands my struggle. You have to be ready to mobilize around that. Absolutely. So at Absolutely. this point, we are in a pure getting ready. If you don't, haven't never vote by mail before, educate yourself. Learn how it works in your state. Be ready to vote by mail. If you're going to vote in person still, obviously, keep social distancing in place, but yes. be prepared to do that. Um, but we have to be prepared for this moment. We saw what happened when we're ready for a moment in 08. We saw what happens when we're ready for a moment in 12. We also saw what happens when in 18, when you look at Congress, added nine new members of Congress that were black in districts, a lot of districts where you thought a black person couldn't run before. Yes, black sir. people can run everywhere. Black people can win anywhere. Yes, I like we that. We have to I recognize it. it. We have to step into the power, and we got to be prepared for this moment because, yes. at the end of the day, Chris, that, while we might be our ancestors' wildest dreams, we've been preparing for this moment yes. all our lives. And I think social media. I think social media. We should use that in the most intense way possible because Absolutely. we can read. So, you know, all of our all of our guys, all of our fraternities, our sororities and all our, uh, you know, high end membership clubs, all of our lawyers and like we have so many ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I think one of the things I would love to to be a part of, like when um, the first time I got a part of Rock the Vote, Rock the Vote was a big deal. You know what I mean? Because the theme made made voting fun and people felt like they were a part of something. So we have to create that kind of energy that they're a part of something historic and that they're some part of something that is so magical. You know what I mean? It's never happened before. Like literally, like we can really do this. You know, Barack Obama was one of the perfect examples of how to see Barack and Michelle and Sasha and Malia in the White House. Like, I would, every day I used to trip seeing that. I was like, that is crazy. So, so get I, you to it, Bill Bellamy, because we're about to see it all over again. Guys, I appreciate you. I have to tell you, there's a group of people out here that have been largely responsible for keeping the drumbeat for Senator Kamala Harris um, on the front burner, and that is something called the K-Hive. Mm -hmm. And so, as you, I'm sure you will appreciate, I want to give them the last words because they deserve okay. it with all Absolutely. the work. Let's start done. real quick. I want to congratulate you for all the work you've done because I've seen you. I know how much work you've put in and how you have mm -hmm. stoked the fire in all of us, everybody that you've touched. So I want to thank you because you were relentless and you were <laughs> yes. focused. And Absolutely. your hard work, you know, with along with all of uh, the rest of her team has paid off. So I thank you, Sister Sora. Thank you, sis. All I got to tell you something. Standing up for somebody that you know is the right one was an easy thing to do. So thank you all, <laughs> all for joining us. The work all starts right. tomorrow. All right. And peace. speaking of work, putting the work in all this time is my girl, Reese Colbert. Yes, you know I had to end with you, baby. Yes, <laughs> this K Hive in the house. K Hive representing with V Star Jones. You are the queen of the K Hive, okay? No, baby. Listen, y'all have raised me. It's it's very nice that you all think of me as the auntie. Yes, K Hive. I, I'll yes. take the auntie of the K Hive. But no, we see this is something that you took on your shoulders a while ago. Why did you? And tell me what this moment means for you now. 
Um, you know, I I had about 300 followers on Twitter when I started my first thread. Kamala Harris has policies. Kamala Harris has policies because it was all about Warren and she has a plan for that. I'm like, wait a second. This black woman has policies. And I, and I saw just the onslaught of the media attacks on her. I saw the onslaught of just the distortions on her record. And I said, you know, what Kamala Harris always says is that you should never be made to fight alone. And so I was just this small little voice in this big, um, you know, world of people that were really going hard against Kamala Harris. And so I said, like you said, it's easy to do the right thing. And I absolutely just thought it was important that Senator Kamala Harris felt that she had the support. I thought it was important to educate people. I thought it was important to drag people that were out there lying okay. on her. And you so, do know how to drag, baby sis. You will drag a person if they do something wrong. Oh. If you come for Kamala, I'm coming for you, period. But uh, this is just, this is so much bigger than Kamala. I mean, I'm sure you guys have said it multiple times tonight. It's about Sojourner Truth and Friday Lou Hamer and Shirley Chisholm and Barbara Jordan and all of our ancestors and everybody who's come before us who's paved the way for Senator Kamala Harris. And she herself will say that she stands on the shoulders of Shirley Chisholm. And so I think of girls like Haley, who I interviewed last week, who said, it's too late. You've already started the power. She's already shown a thousand black girls on the black girls lead call what is possible. And today it's not just aspirational, it's something that is going to happen. And everybody who doubted her, they're eating a little crow today. There are people jumping on the bandwagon, but more importantly, I just got through watching Greenleaf and Lady May got on Greenleaf and she preached a sermon and she said that it is something new and it is a new day in America. It is a new day for people to see the Senator Kamala Harris that you and I know and love and know will push this country forward, know will push Joe Biden forward and know will create a pipeline of generations of black leaders in this country. I, I have to tell you, Reese, you all started a movement and it was something that we talked about when we created our 20 for 20. And for those who don't know, Reese and I did an intergenerational discussion on uh, the 20 things that we thought America would be facing and the major thing that the next administration would be looking at and who would line up with what Joe Biden needed in a running mate. And to a point, Kamala Harris lined up. And so for us, this was an easy choice because it was the only choice. It was a substantive point. And, and I think that was the point that we really drove home and we really attempted to drive home. There was this whole conversation about cosmetics. This is a credentials pick. This is a substantive pick. And black women can see that when you put in the work to become the first black DA the, in San Francisco, the first black AG in San Francisco, the first woman, uh, I'm sorry, in, of California, the, fir the first black woman from the state of California, which only has a 6% black population, you can ascend to the highest levels of office. We're still waiting for that for that next highest, but today the second highest position in the we'll land, we're, we'll we're taking it. it and it's historic and it just feels so good to have. We're gonna have some victory today. We got work to do tomorrow, but today I love the, the, the taste of victory. I have to tell you, um, I wanna thank the K-Hive. I wanna thank those young sisters and brothers that just came together organically and said, not on our watch, you right. will not make this sister into something she's not. Um, you all had the credentials and as you like to say, the receipts every time somebody came. And so this is a wonderful day to show what the power of young people can do. And so mm -hmm. I am just impressed with the young folk that through the K-Hive said, uh, y'all heard of the Bernie bros, but now you know about the K-Hive. And yes. Yeah, you did. It. You did it. You did it. You did it. And Star, I mean, you don't know how much uh, you just contributed to the enthusiasm. We did a kamala -thon maybe three yeah. weeks ago now, and everybody just went wild. So I want to thank you. You've taken me on as your protege. Um, and together, right. yeah. we are going to continue to drum this, beat this drum for Senator Kamala Harris, our next VP, our historic uh, Black yes. woman VP. We could not be more proud of. And I just appreciate all that you've done to take me under your wing and in support of the absolute most amazing person possible for this gig. 
Well, I'm just saying to you, you know, I started my morning off with a prayer. Um, and yes. we talked this morning. Yes. And I said, I don't know why, but it's on my heart. And I'm sending Senator Harris a prayer. And I did. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in the prayer was, Lord, I'm just so blessed with the things that you have done for me and the people that I love. But today's prayer is for our sister Kamala that she be surrounded by people who will support mm. and hold. And we know that with that strength and with her honor and with her ethics and with her integrity, you will see that you've got the very best candidate and Biden Harris 2020 is a winning ticket. Absolutely. Without a doubt. It's, it's a winning ticket. We've come to the end of our hour. I would not have wanted to end it with, without um, being here with you. We see you've just been <laughs> just because of We okay. just get on it. They normally do, okay? All right. Thank you, Sister Star. Thank you, Reese, for, for having us. And well. it is midnight. Absolutely. And on behalf of Sisters Lee, Sisters Rose, you. thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Star. Thank you, Reese, for being on with us. And on behalf of Sisters Lee, Sister Vote, on behalf of the alumni of the illustrious Howard University, and on behalf of my beloved sisterhood, Alpha Kappa Alpha, this is a good day. And it's 1201, ladies, so it's time to get to work. Rest and then work. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so grateful and we're so proud in this moment. <laughs>